and welcome to the Screen Chronicles. I'm Colby, and with me as always is Steve, second cousin twice removed. And today we're here to talk to you about the last three episodes of season three of The Last Kingdom. Oh my god! I know, I know. We were, we were just talking before we started recording this podcast too. We so if you had watched our other two episodes on season three of The Last Kingdom. Uh, we, we did preface the first one, episodes one through four, I think it was, that we had already recorded this talk, our episode eight, nine, and ten talk a year ago in April of 2020. And it didn't it didn't go through, it wasn't working. And then we were like, let's try and wait for it to download. Maybe and then we'll put out the other ones. It never went. So we said, let's just commit to our season four talk stuff, you know. And then finally, about a year later, here we are. We finally get into doing it. Um, so we've seen season four and that we're only going to talk season three and how we felt and recap that and everything. But but just know that that all that's has gone by and all this time has gone by. Yeah. We He has a shield now. We have we have Viking horns. Skull. 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 We're going to keep it to season three. No spoiler for season four. Spoiler alert for season three. If you haven't seen it, we're going to be yes. getting into it. Recapping episodes eight nine and ten of season three telling you our best bro moments our favorite moments and then we're going to just at the end talk a little bit more about the full season and our thoughts yeah. on it too but i gotta say i mean these three episodes were so darn good that it's so worth talking about them again hell yeah hell yeah in I fact mean... i'm considering deleting this video after we do it so we can do it <laughs> in six months again <laughs> sounds like a i don't know <laughs> Let's, let's dive in uh, let's get right to in. episode eight of season three. So, so a brief recap: Skade has sent this curse on Utra. That's what they're perceiving as all the bad things happening. Ragnar, uh, uh, baby monk getting hurt. Yeah, uh, Utra getting sick. His wife dying. They all put it on Skade here. Is is right. the curse? She the curse about. that she that she put on. Right in the previous episode, Brita and Utra had an awesome, amazing side quest to find out a couple of things. Well, they, they really want to find out how can they bring someone from Niflheim to Valhalla. And they sought out story um, to, from season one to find that answer. And they were told that you have to kill the person who sent the person to Niflheim with the blood of the person that got killed. And shortly after that, they figured out they had to kill the person who cast the curse then without... Right. But without breaking the skin, without any blood. Brita told but him this. Brita already knew that because she Brita. had killed uh, Story. Yes. So this episode then, it's just like the previous episode ended with him getting scared from Heston's camp. There was an awesome bro moment, probably one of the best bro moments ever between him and Citric. little fake out. Right. Fake, fake out, out hate. It's fantastic. He gets there and you're just like, all right, so now we're going to get things moving, right? He knows how to do it. But then it seems like what the hell is going on? He's he's like drinking her blood. He's you know he's making Getting out with frisky her. Frisky in the boat. Finnan's yeah. even looking through the thing like what? Yeah, Finnan's like the rest of us. He's like, what the hell is going so, on? I mean, <laughs> up until this point, Skate has been like just trouble. You know, yes. like everywhere she's gone to everybody, and it's so frustrating to see Utrid. They make you think Utrid's like finally just like wants her and. She is she is supposed to be attractive in the show, and I think she is. Like she uh, she's like this good looking Dane. All the guys want her because she's a seer and she has like a certain um power to see like a like whoever she's with is gonna be king, you know. Yeah. And so it really kind of made us think when we first watched it, we were like, Utrid, like what are you doing? Similar to how we were saying that back when he got mad at Citric. Exactly. We're like, Utrid, what are you doing? So they sail back home then, and he drinks her blood, and it's just nasty. And you're just like, what the hell, Utrecht? Uh, they roll up. They find out that these priests are basically Cookham, which he hasn't been at here, his his old homestead. Uh, the right. priests are taking all of the food and stuff. One of the, the farmers or whoever, I guess, whatever title would be, someone yeah. who works the land, uh, is like, hey, they're taking all of our food, man. You know, you got to stop this. He goes in there. Priests are, you know, classic like season one sort of vibes oh, yeah. going on here, where where the uh, the people who are down. yeah, 
like moral yeah. high ground people and this this isn't anything at christianity or anything this is just at this time period and these people of using their power right uh, being hypocritical saying that they're these people that you know want to spread peace and love through jesus and then they're they're stealing yeah. all the food of these these I, people i also love when utrid comes back and that farmer who's telling him about it is like tells him his name he's like i don't know if you remember me and utrid's like of course i remember you you're this person and it's like, oh, it's such a good lord. I know. He you know starts what I mean? like going like, off of like, he's like, your wife is this. This is your kid. Your dog. <laughs> your kid scored three goals last week at soccer. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't remember you. Dude. Yeah, I mean, he's just, and that's just another theme this season. of just seen how solid a fucking bro Utrid is, man. Oh, with, my God. Uh, you know, his, the rest of his crew sticking by him. But here, you know. They're getting a little uncertain, though, you know, especially yeah, they're, they're like, why is he snuggling up to uh, skate? Yeah. Oz for giving in to this curse, you know, because mm -hmm. kind of earlier, I think skate had the ultimatum like, you know, Utra, take me as your woman or, you know, you're going to be cursed. And exactly. now they're wondering, has he given in, you know, and that was one option Breed had told him to was you could make her your woman if you want to break the curse that way. Right. So it's like, uh, yeah. So anyway, Uhtred's like not happy. He's like, you know, my people need food. You guys are reading it. I think they were gathering it for the army. Alfred had ordered them to go there, gather it for the army. Mm -hmm. They're like, they're like, what's up with this intrusion, Uhtred? And Uhtred's like, uh, yo, this is my house, bro. Uh, what are you talking about? And he looks up in the doorway <laughs> and he sees a crucifix up there. He doesn't like that. <laughs> that shit ain't pagan. <laughs> shit ain't pagan. That shit ain't pagan. <laughs> He just like Uhtred's face. Uh, he's pissed. And the priest is kind of like, you know, I kind of respect the priest in this instance. You know, he's like, I understand why you're mad, but, you know, I can't go back against my faith. So he was standing up for what he believed in. Yeah. He was like, hey, I know and, you're going to kill me and you're just looking for an excuse to kill me. But kill me, yeah. I like I don't want to die, but I'm not taking that down. Yeah. And, so I had a little bit of respect for him there. Yeah. A um, little bit. Bishop you know, probably taking a little bit more than he needs. Osfirth is like, I'll take it down. And Uhtred's <laughs> like, you will not. <laughs> Hild comes in. <sighs> and she's like, oh my god, Bay. Hild Bay. Hild Bay all day. All day. <laughs> she comes in, he's like, well, it's mine. And he's like, I'd prefer if you didn't take it down, but, you know, whatever. While she's talking, it then comes crashing down and skades up there, just like, well, that was easy. You know? Can we eat? Can we eat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheeseburgers? please <laughs> it's a great moment then with yeah. uh hill afterwards because we're we're just like what is utra doing here you know what the hell is he thinking why is he going skate there's this curse gisla is the best wife you've ever had i know uh gisla was just like a such a good woman and now he's with a bad woman and i think at some point later on in the scene when finnan leaves they make their plans and finnan's about to leave um, he says to Uhtred, we all need a good woman, you know, because yeah. the bros, the bros are, are worried about him. Yeah. You know, like, you know, if, if you were dating somebody who I was like, concerned about, I'd be worried about you too. I'd be like, I'll be worried about you too, bro. Yeah. Thanks, bro. Like, we all need a good woman. A lucky yeah, child. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you're right. They have a sweet talk with Hilda Uhtred here. They're walking debt back. And of course they're like their old selves. And it seems like this is bringing him back because we're, we're, I'm still yeah. thinking like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? And it seems yeah. like she's helping bring him back. And she's like, hey, your your kids uh, are being cared for by the church. And he's like, <laughs> don't tell me they got baptized because I she's broke like... up with my first <laughs> wife because of that shit. And she's like, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, she, that was a total like moment. Like uh... <laughs> they're eating. <laughs> Where are my children? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> she kind of grounds him, like you say. This conversation, she always seems to have that effect on him. You know, I just I love Hilt, man. I love her so. Oh much. my god, I wish she was in season four more. I really do. Yeah, um, I think she's getting phased out of the show. Well, um, she's not really in the books that much, and that's right. right. That's a crazy thing too with this season. We we've, we've just um, I haven't completely finished yet, but I'm close to finishing. Uh, death of kings which is I just finished it yeah. one of the books that this season is based on and this season is probably the most different from the books as far as the two that it comes from and yet right. it's still so freaking awesome but i mean it keeps a lot of characters alive who 
who actually die off in the books. Um, I won't give any spoilers yeah. for the books or anything away here, but no, because a- I think uh, we're planning on doing book talks mm-hmm. here in the near future. We're going to probably do two books at a time and maybe do a little compare and contrast with a season. We still have to kind of iron out the details of how we want to cover it. But we're definitely going to be covering the books. Something's going to happen. Yeah. But so anyway, though, Hild and the rest of the priests leave. Finnan goes with them. Um, and then Uchin makes a big scene in front of the priest saying like, hey, I'm staying here. Maybe I'm going to conquer Winchester later. I don't know. But I'm definitely yeah. staying here. I'm not going. I'm not going there anytime soon. And everyone's like, OK, all right. Well, all right. All right. See you. Jeez. All right. <laughs> right. Um, but the other guys, he tell, you know, he tells Finn, you know, that's, you know, go get yourself a woman, have a drink, chill out there in, mm. in Winchester. Osworth stays behind, though. Yeah. And um, Osworth does. And it's we 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 see as one of the reasons is because he's concerned about Uhtred. And I've really just loved Osfirth this season. Uh, his bro moments. Uh, he didn't have a lot yeah. of bro moments in season four. If he made it to season four, we don't know. Uh, you don't know. Um, but he didn't have a lot. Right. Um, and I think he had some really cool ones this season. But anyway, though, Uhtred and Skade go off for a bath. A much a much needed bath. A death bath. <laughs> a death bath. Oh my god, this is one of my favorite moments of the season. This is one so of awesome. my favorite TLK moments, I gotta say, because this is kind of the pinnacle. They like really had us thinking, like, wow, is he really falling in love with her? Mm-hmm. They get in the water, they start getting all frisky, and she starts just spitting out this like I own you talk. Yeah. She's which like, just like was making my blood boil your blood and your stuff and and they're kissing and he's he's groping her and stuff and he gets out his his muscles and he's like oh damn Uhtred okay okay Uhtred has definitely Uhtred been working out hey yeah. Uhtred was jacked this season we think they're just taking an innocent you know sexy bath mm. when Uhtred just just like takes her shirt <laughs> over her head and just throws her under the water oh man just like hoodie too far over the eyes but like tenfold yeah. you know yeah just reminded me you know in old hockey fights they would pull the jersey they would pull the jersey over the head yeah you know and then... <laughs> yeah um, but yeah he just dunks her under the water so I remember, remember... losing our shit during this I mean, oh my remember... god because i mean there's it was so like the that... pinnacle it was like oh he's getting frisky he really does love her he really does love her oh no Uhtred. no 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 and she's literally like oh. i own you and then <laughs> that was it that was it and i remember i remember when we watched that dude i like i stood up and was like i knew you i knew it Uhtred. i knew you couldn't do it you remember that <laughs> never doubted you it was like you did it to us again yep <laughs> but uh that's two times that season yeah, yeah. i love I, it's it's one thing i love because they do get you thinking that all right here comes on some some needless drama some some pointless stuff that's just so out of character just for drama and then yeah. all of a sudden utrid turns around and and just does the right thing and it, it was yeah. planned all along you know yeah and uh damn and, and he it, doesn't even tell his best friends about it and that's that's the thing though is what helps sell each of these moments though. Like he didn't tell Finnan about him and Citric had rehearsed it. And if you read the books too, that's actually a scene that's from that. Yeah. Uh, the books is him and Citric. They actually he even says, Oh, we had rehearsed it earlier. We had rehearsed the whole thing. Yeah. What I was gonna call him and what he's gonna call me. And it's funny because we we talk about it in our previous episode before we had read the books. Right, like, where were they practicing? Like, I wonder they have a con. They totally had a conversation beforehand. They're like, "Oh, this is gonna be so good. We're gonna get him." <laughs> so, I mean, Finnan was just trying to break them up, and you're just, and that sold it for the Danes too, right? But Finnan wasn't right. in on it. That was the biggest thing to sell it to um, Dagfin at the time, and, and so, now they needed to sell it to, to Skate. Yeah, they had to sell it to Skate. They, they had to sell then to the priest that Utrid was being a dick, and that he was like in in trance with this pagan witch. So right. he, he didn't tell any of them either. Osforth, like I said, he stayed home. And I guess he wanted to see if he was going to do sexy time with her because he was poking in through the, the, the grass to see her. And yeah, then, uh, he was. So he sees, he sees all. Oh, I think, I don't think he was trying to be like peeping Tom perverted. Thing. No, but he was trying to watch out boy. for his bro. Yeah. He was trying to watch, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was worried about him. Everybody's worried that Uhtred's like turned to like 
some sort of dark side or something. Yeah. And this is such a dark season too. I mean, just as far as all the deaths and stuff. So like it was, it was very frustrating at the time when this all was going down, but then you're just like, Oh damn, that's right. Utra's the man. Yeah. And it was such an amazing moment. Yeah. Such one of the best. He goes back to the house then later after a a good, uh, murder, good murder. You know, he probably finished his bath. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he probably <laughs> just like moved amazing, to his side. Amazing aerial shot of um Skade. Yeah. Drone footage shooting right up and that she's was. just laying there dead. And uh yeah, so they go back and and Osforth has cooked him up some kind of soup or something. <clears throat> just bro, you know, you know how like if you were out and you, you know, murdered, you know, one of your dates <laughs> and uh, i knew about it i know how stressful that is you know i'm, I'm gonna make you some craft mac and cheese back Dude, in the apartment you know what, what you would do what you would do the times i have been upset you have got me a chocolate shake from arby's is what you did that's go. it's not a sponsorship that's... from arby's or anything it is no. a sponsorship for all chocolate shakes of chocolate shakes yes. if you want us to sponsor you just yes. you as a people chocolate shakes yeah. Yep. We will sponsor we'd be down you. for that <laughs> for free that. for free shakes for free for free shakes that's all we need but you you would yeah so totally totally this is well, our- just a bro moment we could really connect with it you know yeah and utra just looks exhausted and, and i i kind of wonder like why because he seems upset coming in and i feel like it's like an exhaustive relief yeah he's relieved in a way sort of i think i think he's in a way he's relieved he still has a lot on his plate he's still but, got a lot um, of stuff to check off that list um, but yeah, I mean, I, I was kind of wondering, you know, was it just like my brother died, Gisela died? Like, yeah, here's this one time. goal he's, I've been trying to shoot outlaw for, for Wessex That's still right. at this point, you know, but it's, it's such a great scene and it, it's so quick too. I forget like when I was just watching it, like it was just, it went so quick, Yeah, but he's just sitting there talking to Osforth and Osforth, you know, s- even says like i stayed here for you you know just in case and you couldn't for, break the curse and, and for for gisla for because gisla treated him so well gisla treated him so well and she was gisla was also bay by the way oh my god um if i haven't said that enough but uh this all of a sudden then john loon and ivar just like bay, <laughs> bay! <laughs> just, bringing it just bring out like uh, yeah. I, 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 I. <laughs> and everybody's waterwork starts. No going offense. And... No offense meant to Ivar there. You that's, no, that's it's the best I can do. Incredible talent. But um it, it just, these moments just hit you so hard and you know, talking about I think Osforth is talking about like how good a woman she was, how kind and gentle and utra jokingly says you clearly did not know the lady gisela you know mm. she playful was. loving she oh was yeah those... she she whipped him into shape let's be she honest she would whip him into shape though she definitely would remember she when, was those um, things when citric was like trying to you know ask, ask for, for permission and at first utra was like eh, and then gisela was like what you say to him no <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna do this <laughs> So she whipped him into shape. It's pretty that awesome. That was that was such a good moment there. And mm-hmm. um, they then ride off then. And what ends up happening is uh the the group that Finnan went with and the church people, they come across like these gypsies or other I don't know if that's the right term to use. Um people of sort of pre- these musicians, these musicians, minstrels. Minstrels. They see them, and what ends up happening is I guess Utrecht and gang uh sort of sneak in with them. Which we didn't know at the time when we were watching it. We didn't know at the time. It was kind of weird why, like, Finn and they came over and, like, asked for a tip or something, you know? Mm. And Finn and told him no. And you know, they were <laughs> like, friendly, but. And the and guy was like, what called an him asshole. something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then we get Finn and Bishop Eckenwald and, and Citric. They get to Winchester and they're calling for Stayapa. And Stayapa comes out eating an apple and they're just like uh you know he's just kind of being stubborn letting them in and it's like we're one of finnan's famous lines the only thing we're guilty of is being tired and hungry mm-hmm. i think you know they know that finnan and citric are utrid's friends and they want to be careful of letting utrid in yeah but Bish- because bishop eckenwald 
was there. And he was convinced that Uhtred stayed at Cookham. Yeah. And even Hild was convinced Uhtred was, yeah. was staying at Cookham. Right. And that's Which what was all believed. by design. Yes. That's why I didn't tell them anything. Yeah. So they get let in then. And that's how Uhtred sort of goes in through the Trojan horse, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just kind of thinking in Osford's with him, with him, but like, come on, like stay up has got to be checking that cart. <laughs> stay up. <but> let's go. <laughs> the minstrels kind of like catch the door while they're closing it. And he's like, Hey, you know, we're here for the festivities and the music and you guys want, you know, and I think stay looks around like, yeah, we could use some of that. You know, <laughs> yeah. like that could be cool. Yeah. You know? Cause there's, there's the wedding going on here between right. Alfred and Edward. Right. Uh, they sneak in uh, so, some other things though that have been going on just through town too. After Aethelwald got his eye burned out, he's he's not oh, given up. Man. He makes an alliance with Sigurbrit and says, "Hey, of Kent, yes. Mm-hmm. What you're going to tell people is that Uhtred is going by Uhtred Ragnarsson. Like he wants Winchester to fall. Uh, he's going to put Wessex in danger. Like right. that might not be the truth, but that's what you've got to say. So he doesn't right. team up with Alfred, and then I can't be king because then." then Edward will be in line for the throne. So right. uh, Secret Brigade is going around yelling uh, nonsense. There's a great scene where Bianca comes up and he's like, uh, he's like, stop speaking out of your ass. And he's yeah. like, and he's like, keep your buttocks clenched. clenched. <laughs> Love it. He, Love Ian that Hart, line. Man. Ian Hart is amazing. Amazing. So we also get a, uh, a scene where, one of our favorite little moments that we really could easily go by over people's heads. Yeah. Ethelhelm had heard some rumors in the alehouse about maybe there's a, you know, a children of son. Edward, you know, bastard children. And he's going to, you know, he had to talk to Alfred about something else. So he brings it up to pure league. He's talking to pure league about it and they go in and Edward's there and he confronts Edward about it. Edward doesn't really answer because purely kind of steps in as like, I thought we agreed to leave all alehouse gossip at the alehouse, mm. you know, but um, Ethelhelm has a lot of doubt right now about what's going on because from Ethelhelm's point of view, he has an awesome opportunity to have his daughter marry the future king of Wessex. Yeah. And then have his grandchildren be next in line to the throne. And he doesn't want any, and, be, and remember too, the big thing about this is people are talking that, Edward married uh, Edwin, the 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 woman Sigurbrit likes, and why he's he's sort of teaming up against Edward here, or seemingly. Yeah, so, so he far. doesn't. He already has something against Edward. Yeah, yeah, right. But so he actually did marry this woman, uh, Edwin, and have these kids in the eyes of God. So it was these are actually then right. rightful heirs to the throne. Then, um, and that's the big thing is if that happens, then Ethelhelm's grandchildren. Uh, through Elfwin will not be legitimate heirs to the throne. So that's why he's pretty concerned. Exactly. About this. And so he he's going into Alfred. And this is the little scene you were you were talking about here. That we love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Alfred goes, you know, very quietly says, guards leave us. And you know, he's he's so weak that they didn't really hear him. And what does she say? Yeah, uh, Aylesworth is then like, like uh, you will leave us guards. And then and then the guard like looks like back like left and right. Yeah, she's like, yes, you. <laughs> but she like snapped at him. No, it, well, then after he like looks around, she's like, yes, you. And he's like, oh, oh. And he like leaves. <laughs> it's such a great because he, cause yeah. he like looks around. He's just like, but it, like I'm supposed to guard. You know, like, like I'm doing my job and you're yelling at me. Like, what did I do? <laughs> we, we made a post on this. We'll have to put it out again here. Here it is yeah, for yeah. you guys right on the screen. But it's it's a great, um, great moment there. Just and I, I didn't really hear any people talk about this, but uh, we, we I know, I know. We, we rewound it. that. We rewound that. I don't know how many times just because it was it was so it cracked us up a lot. <laughs> just a little thing. They didn't yeah. need to put that in <laughs> me. Um, I hope I hope the people, the directors, just thought that was hilarious, and that's why they kept it in. I think so. Well, I mean, also too, these are the the last three episodes that Stephen Butchered wrote. Mm. Um, he's not part of the show anymore, uh, uh, but he was there back in the beginning. If you listen to our talk with Nick Murphy, who was the first like producer director of the of the first, first season, two episodes, yeah, and him and Butchered kind of helped design what the, the show was going for so i i yeah. wouldn't be surprised if that's some butchered humor too i mean that could have been the director going in but 
that was just it was a great little funny scene that just you know we didn't we didn't need it, it made us laugh it made, it made us, us laugh. laugh and then that's when the whole ethelhelm conversation happens with Ellsworth and alfred utred also comes up is and utred comes up basically is he an outlaw or not and yeah. Ellsworth is basically like 100 percent. yeah if he comes here we're gonna <laughs> kill him oh yeah dead so dead and alfred's like well if uh edward wants to pardon him then you know yeah. he's fine then he's fine and, and, uh, and alfred alfred's pretty pissed because Ellsworth keeps trying to you know talk over him mm-hmm. and he's speak like if the king him. may speak <laughs> if the king may speak yeah and he he basically clarifies it for um ethelhelm saying like you know before i if, if utrid came on soil right now yes he'd be arrested um but then it's going to be up to edward you know mm-hmm. And it makes it so. pretty clear that he's just like right there that he wants Uhtred then to be a part of to the the future here of Wessex here. And yeah, as soon as Ethelhelm leaves, he tells that to Ellsworth. He's like, he's like, he needs Uhtred, mm-hmm. you know, like he's need he a needs warrior. a warrior by his side. She's like, you have Steapa. And he's like, no, we need somebody who knows not only how to fight, but when to fight, you know, and that's Uhtred all the way. Uhtred is so wise in, in those ways. He's like, yeah, let's attack now before they get strong. Let's go here. And he's been yeah. right so far this whole season about, you know, he stopped yeah. Heston at Bianfiat. They, they got Bianfiat from him. So Alfred, like, does trust Uhtred with this, you know? <laughs> Even a, though they've had differences. There's another uh, great moment here, too, because yep. uh, he he then says to, to Ellsworth, like, you may, he literally says, you may leave me. And he's yeah, <laughs> like, get out of the room, you know, yeah. like as politely as possible. <laughs> and, it's, and so she's walking out all mad. He, he has like another line as she's walking out for, you know, about how it needs to be Edward's decision. Mm. Um, and then and he, and he kind of tells her, you know, it's going to be your job to lead him to the right decision. Mm. You know, trying to encourage her to, you know, we need Uhtred. But like in the very next scene... <laughs> I think it's like the next scene. Yeah. Uh, Ellsworth went to pray. She's nobody's in this room. She just went there. She just got, you know. She was there first. <laughs> she was there first. And she goes and she's praying, you know. Alfred comes in and he sits down. And like right like, next door. Yeah. He's like, I wish to pray in peace. Basically peace. saying, you may leave me again. <laughs> <laughs> just as politely as possible, just going around to wherever she is kicking her out yeah, of there yeah, yeah. just following her <laughs> just chilling for a little bit and then go to find her again <laughs> kick her out Steph, where is my wife she's she's now in that the bathroom a, an abuse of power yeah abuse of power there alfred <laughs> yeah she's mid she's mid poop <laughs> you may leave me but but <laughs> she prays and she it basically makes it obvious so that she doesn't want to utred then uh, to to guide Edward, she's less no, like, she like, can we Uhtred. can we have a pagan guide our Christian way? Like we're we're trying to have a Christian kingdom here. So it's pretty yeah, obvious. I think there she prays she... that she wants it to be like untouched by paganism. You know, she she prays to God that for just a totally Christian, you know, kingdom for her son. You know, mm-hmm. Uhtred then, like we said, he snuck in. Uh, he ends up actually going to Tora's house, and we had heard yep. that that all the people who are coming to town then uh, for the wedding for edward's wedding some of them are going to be a little scared that alfred's dying and that there's danes with a giant ass army on the way so they've been right. kind of prejudiced then towards the danes here i guess in town um so utred then he he's so it's so cool here too because he he's not just like outside like hiding or by the door or something he's like he I looks know. like he's the curtain of the window here. I know because <laughs> he has a cloak on. It was awesome, and he's sitting on the window. It's so sill. Batman. It's so I don't know. So Batman, like when he's in the rafters, and uh, <sighs> so Tora comes out with a knife, um, like who's harassing me here? And uh, Edward, or Edward, <laughs> Uhtred comes down, uh, f- turns from the the curtain he is into <laughs> Uhtred, <laughs> just glides down. <laughs> And goes in and, and he cool. tells her then, uh, like we said, his other big checklist thing is here. Now he needs Ragnar's blood to kill the guy who 
killed Ragnar and sent him. Yeah, to he, he does the math. He does. He pulls out the board. You know, it's like <laughs> carry the two. Carry you slit your hand. You know, and Tur is like, yeah, yeah, I know. Like uh, that. I love. By the way, I love. It's just another like cool. And I don't know if it's a real, a real you know, ritual thing, yeah, a real maybe. mythical thing, you know, or if it was just made up for the show. Mm-hmm. But either way, I think it's just so cool. It is so the whole so blade soaked in blood. This the whole you have to kill the curse without spilling blood. You know, I love that it just, lore. It made it you know? so cool. It made it so cool, and it's yeah. and I'm, I'll just say it's it's a lot different than the book in the fact that that was an original sort of idea, and that it was so cool, and it right. it made it so much more suspenseful and the payoff at the end. So anyway, he's like, I'm gonna need some blood, and then she's like. Oh uh, what? And he's like, no, no, not all of it, not all of it, just like a cup, <laughs> like a cup. Yeah. So and she's like, oh, silly me, <laughs> silly me. She starts filling up the the, the bowl of blood. Uh, Bianca uh, and, comes and home. Yeah, yeah. Well, he had been, you know, in like the, you know, where they have the ale house and people sit outside at the picnic tables, and Athelwald and his boys are over at another table, and you know they're looking at Finnin and they're looking at Citric, and Bianca comes and hangs out and. They're talking, and he's like, "Where, where is Uhtred? You know, when you guys are here." And Finnan very slyly with his, he may very well be sitting at your table, you know, my lord. And so Biaka, you know, <sighs> starts walking home, and it <laughs> cuts to Ethelwald being like, "Uhtred's here." <laughs> it's obvious. I mean, <laughs> I mean, all his people are here. <laughs> all of his main bros what is he doing without his bros <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's no way there's no way so ethelwald we already know ethelwald's pretty smart he and sigurbreet then he tells sigurbreet let's get our posse together yeah 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 Bianca goes home uh he sees the blood stuff going on he's like this shit is not christian <laughs> right that shit ain't christian my wife christian. my wife uh, so he is not having it. He is not having it. Tara tries to tell him, like, no, 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 we need to do it. Like, and Tara is so great too, by the way. Tara is so awesome. Woman. She's like, she's like, hey, I don't denounce your God. And he's like, because he's God. And yeah, and she, and she still she stays so calm throughout. Like she doesn't yeah, get she worked does. up. She's so like, how could you be mad with her? Like, how could you not no. love Tara? By the way, she's awesome. She's, like I, I would have got worked up. So then he's like, I'm going outside. And it's so funny because he goes outside like all angry and he like like kicks off a stool to sit down and you just hear like this chicken like <laughs> or, like, or something. And I just, I just like yeah. wish I would have saw that. I mean, it was funny yeah. that you didn't see it, but yeah. I was just like, <laughs> just see Bianca. I wonder if they just threw that sound effect in like after they're filming. Like, yeah, you know, something let's let's get an animal noise in there. That'll be funny. <laughs> It's awesome. But at that moment, you know, Ethelwald and the posse show up at uh, Bayaka's front door and they're like, we want to look inside. We think Uhtred is at your house. You know, I just saw you talking to the bros and you made a beeline to your house. I think he's here. <laughs> and it's a pure legs there and he sort of intercepts them. And it's so great because yeah. uh, there's a, pure leg is so awesome. Ethelwald's like, it's not your place to tell us where we can't go. And Beerling's like, it's not your place. Not to tell me what my place is or to tell me. What yeah, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> and then him it. and him and Bianca then are there, the two of them. And then they're just like, they're poking fun at his eye. They're like, which eye are you looking out of here for? And they're like, ooh, right. an outlaw is here. And like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I think and, Finnan and the boys roll up. Like, is there a problem here? Oh, and, my God. That's, and right around that point. Another great yeah. bro moment here with all the. Oh, yeah. Showing up for Bianca, you know what I mean? Just like yeah, yeah, yeah. Rolling up there with their crew. That's so great. Yeah. Uh, at, right around that time, Tara actually comes out, you know, because Bianca is not like going to let these guys through without a fight, you know. But Tara comes out. And she's like, it's okay. It's okay. Let's let them look around, you know. And, you know, I'm thinking, oh, Uhtred's going to be a curtain again. <laughs> <laughs> that could have worked yeah. just as well, by the <laughs> I way. I know. But apparently they had a little hidey hole down in the floorboards. They go in and they look around and Ethelwald is like, well, well what the fuck? Because I swear to God, he was here. He's like, I, I think he said he, he was place? here. I could I can smell him. <laughs> he had such a like a villain thing to say. Or like a Wolverine like thing orc. to say. Like an orc. <laughs> yeah, orc in Lord of the Rings. 
<laughs> I smell man flesh. By the way, Lord of the Rings people for Amazon, I, Harry is a huge Lord of the Rings fan, so you should get him in there. You should definitely. You get him should in. any this, future Lord of the Rings stuff like Harry would fit in perfectly, and he just kills it this season. He mean he just absolutely freaking kills. He was, it, he was always good, but he just he stepped it up another notch. Oh my god! In season three, like, but let's just talk. Say this about the books. Yeah, if you read the book, we just finished six. You're almost finished with six. Yeah. And Ethelwald really isn't a huge presence in the books. Not He's especially in like, not in the fifth one. They really built him up in the show way more. They put him in a lot of scenes he never was in. And Harry even told us that when we had him on, on the podcast that uh, he wasn't supposed to even be in the later season one, like ventures with Uhtred and the gang. Yeah. So I just think that is a huge credit to the actor that Harry is that I think the, the producers looked at like the footage that he had done and just like, how can we not keep him around? I keep using him. And I, I just think they made great choices with this character. Yeah. And again, so inventive by the writers too to, yeah. to be able to do that. So anyway, though, they all leave. Sikabrit, Sikabrit's like kind of a cool guy though. Like this whole time, he's like, yeah. he, the, his main gripe is that with Edward, Edward being the guy who got his the girl he loves knocked up and then got her forced into a nunnery so then no one else can have her, right? Like, hey, I is, get that. That is kind of shitty, that's, man. That's shitty. That's worth being upset about. That's yeah. worth not liking a guy over, right? Yeah. Although it wasn't so much Edward who wanted her to go to a, you know, to a nunnery. He didn't want that, right? Yeah. That was no. that was all but Edward or that. Alfred and I don't know who sent her. But either way, his actions led to that. So, and he's he's really cool. He's like, hey, like I'm sorry, we're here, Bianca. Like, we'll go. And they and they do go. The next day happens. Yeah. Edward and Elfled's wedding is going down now. Oh yeah, it, and, and Bianca and Alfred had had a conversation with each other. Yeah. And Alfred, he was kind of asking Alfred like what he wanted and stuff. And Bianca kind of is like, what if I told you that you could talk to Uhtred? Mm -hmm. He is here. You know, and hypothetically, yeah, hypothetically, if he was here, no, <laughs> where would you be during the wedding? Um, to, to Alfred's speak like, to him. Alfred's like, great, I hate weddings. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's a perfect chance for me to ditch. <laughs> Alfred did want an opportunity to speak to Uhtred. Yeah. Alfred also needs it to be secret because Alfred needs to maintain the reputation he has. And he can't, you know, he can't be lenient in front of everybody. You know, a guy who held the king by knife point kicked him in his stomach when he's having all these yeah. this terrible bowel disease going on like it, Christ. Oh, God. So, so yeah he's he's yeah. got to keep up the image and then so yeah. Uhtred sneaks in Bianca like from Assassin's it's so, so, Creed so cool. yeah like, yeah nice Assassin's up, Creed like when you in. sneak with the monks or the priests you know yeah. really beautiful wedding scene real quick too of yeah. the great hall and um you know, yeah, and then it shows a few monks going by. The guards don't know anything because Bayaka's leading them, and all of a sudden, like the monks go one way, and you know, Uhtred and Bayaka go, um, and he lets Uhtred go into the reading room, the room, the study, I guess. You know that Alfred was always documenting things in, and and it's so cool because we don't really know what's there at first, and then all of a sudden, Uhtred starts to look at the pages, and then just Ivar, Ivar and John Lou, oh, John Lou just. Telling us with this music, he's like waving his hand over the pages as if he can like feel what's on him because he's like been everywhere, you know. He's he, Battle Ethendon, the Marshes, oh, you know. He's, he's had like, so much to do in Alfred's Chronicle, and as he's scanning over these pages, <laughs> such incredible cinematography, by the way. Yeah, love it. Absolutely. But it kind of shows Uhtred looking down. And you see in the back, like a ghost into focus, a ghost. <laughs> it's it's pretty creepy. It it's pretty like good. really creepy. But it's Alfred looking like a ghost. He looks so he's wearing a white gown, but he looks so white himself. Yeah. So close to death. So pale. And the, the way the music swells there and man, you don't know, you know, you don't know what he's going to do. What is Alfred going to do? Because yeah. last we knew Alfred you know, said he was going to kill Uhtred if he came back. And he look you can't tell what he's what he's feeling on his face. He's just staring at Uhtred in the back like like a ghost. Oh, ghost like. <laughs> oh, ghost like. And that's the end of the episode. And this is oh. another moment like we were talking before when 
Uch, when uh, Edward had to make his king decision moment at the Banff yacht, uh, where we were just like, next one. Yeah, it doesn't matter what you had planned. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> Should <laughs> you we had study to to for room. our doctorate here? No! Should we go take that test? <laughs> nah. <laughs> we need to know. And so that was the end of, you know, before we moved to that episode. Yeah. That was, that the, was end. the end. So let's let's kind of discuss our favorite bro moments and best moments from that episode yeah. uh, before we move on. There was there was actually a lot of for me a lot of great bro moments. Uh obviously I, I really liked uh Bianca when he went like Utred's not there. He's always sticking up for his boy Utred. You know what I mean? Bianca oh, yeah, yeah, ever yeah. since season one where he's like I will be his sword. I will be his connection to God. I will go with him in every battle. And no, no, no. Like, great scene. And so he's always sticking up for his boy. And he tells uh, Sigurd to clench his ass. Uh, yeah, clench, yeah, yeah, clen- yeah. Buttocks clenched. Uh, that, was, that was great. Also, too, yeah. uh, when Finnin and Pure Leg and all of them roll up to protect Bianca. You know what I mean? Like, what's more bro than sticking up for your bro when this other yeah. crew of nasties are coming, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I agree with those. Those are really, really good. Yeah. But I, I, I got to go with, yeah. Go ahead. I, I, well, I have to say, my best bro moment, though, is Osforth with the soup, though. I mean, coming yep, in. That's mine. That's absolutely mine. Uh, Osforth with the soup is psh, that gets so you, good. Man. And he brings up Gisela, who we love, and uh, Utra just needed a little pick me up there. Like he's been like holding this all in to like Total protect, bro-mo. try and protect his team. You know what yep. I mean? Like it's such a good bro moment there, man. Fantastic. So that's that's Fantastic. yours too. Fantastic. That's mine. That's by by far in this episode. Um, and I think we could probably agree on the best moment from this episode. What is it? Utra killing Skade. <laughs> Oh my god, one of the best, you know, I've said it several times on our talks, it's one of my favorite moments from the whole season. It's such a great standout moment in the show. I mean, mind-blowing they, moment. They've just got you fooled the whole time and it's it's so satisfying when it happens too because uh, like the whole time you're just like, "No," and he's just kissing her and so I'm uh, like, "No." And then she's like, "You are mine." And then I own you. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I own you. <laughs> That that's my best moment too. Absolutely. Just Uhtred making us feel like making us doubt him and then throwing it in our face. I'm such like, why you doubt me, guys? He's like he's like Stephen Colby, like, why why you even doubt me? I'm so, I'm sorry, Uhtred. He's like, you know me. <laughs> you know <laughs> me? I've always been this way. That's his new accent. I think it's mercy you're going to <laughs> by the way tell us your favorite uh, moments from any of these episodes uh, favorite bro moments or favorite moments in general absolutely absolutely uh, we'd love to hear them so let's jump into episode nine yeah so a brief overview there's this awesome scene between Altr- alfred and utrid alfred okay. actually yes this is again great one of my favorite scenes from the whole series of the last kingdom the, the kingdom has to sort of adapt to and plan for after Alfred's death. Um, and unfortunately, we also get another big death from uh, our, our one of our TLK faves, man. One of our TLK faves. Well, but big broad yeah. strokes there. Let's jump into it. We just yeah, saw yeah. Ghost Alfred st- just come into focus, right? And uh, this is like we just like I just said briefly. Like this is one of the best scenes from the last kingdom ever this is one of the best scenes from any television thing i've ever seen any movie i've ever seen oh like, yeah i mean david dawson let's just first of all it was the show just riddled with fantastic actors david dawson has kind of in my eyes kind of led the charge of i don't know his presence in the show is just to me it's unmatched by anybody you know um, yeah. we'd, well, we'd love to have him on the podcast if we could. If we could get David Doss on the podcast, that would be fantastic. Absolutely, hoping for that. And also, though, too, I mean, Adre Alexander Draymond. I mean, he. he I think he a lot of people. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people just think of him as the Dane Slayer, basically, as as the role in the show. They're like, oh, he's the hot guy that who's good at fighting and riding and shit. But I mean, like him in this scene with Alfred, 
and pretty much i mean any other scene he does too that's emotional is always is always great but i mean the the back and forth they have with this is is so good and this is another scene too that i think is even better than the books uh oh yeah yeah yeah. between alfred and utred Mm -hmm. there's sort of reconciliation and i mean there's a lot more that goes into the scene too than what was in the book because i mean i mean they they address stuff back from season one you know this this relationship has been so back and forth back and forth um and so unjust at times you know you can on a second watch there i mean i've said this a bunch of times when i first watched it when we were first watching it anyone who ever posed utred or was talking smack on utred or scheming against him i was always like that's a bitch right there that right right that right, person right. is a bitch and <laughs> like utred but you can you can always see a little bit where they're coming from right like anytime utred has helped out there is some other thing he's looking for he's looking for connections for bevenbar he's looking to help get an army so he can get skade and his curse he's looking for you know so he always does have something that he wants i think he does care about wessex i've said this before i i genuinely do and we see at the end of this season he 100 percent does i can also see alfred then i can also see his right. perspective going into this yeah, and that's something you don't get from the books by the way no you don't get alfred's perspective that's one thing i love about the show is you can kind of understand like if you're totally in Alfred's shoes, you might very well do all the same things that he did, even though it seems unfair to Uhtred. It was smart. Like everything he did was smart and for a reason. He, I yeah. don't think he did anything to Uhtred like totally out of spite. No, I mean, it, but there has been a lot of wrong moves on, on Alfred's part. I, I mean, mm. or at least moves where you're not being the best towards Uhtred. I mean, he forced him into yeah. servitude back in season two when he's like hey yeah. if you don't join me i'm gonna have ragnar killed you know unless you swear loyalty to me um and then utred who did honor that and swore to him then alfred realizing when he was gonna die back at you know the beginning of this season was like well i want you to swear to edward his wife dies utred's wife just died he buries her he has to dig her up to give her uh, a nice pagan funeral you know right. and uh, brother Godwin starts t- talking that shit. Uhtred smacks him to death. <laughs> By the way, one of the best things ever happened in anything. Smacking yeah. someone to death. Yep. One slap. And then he, he uses that moment then where Uhtred didn't intentionally try to kill this guy. There's a bunch of witnesses seeing that this guy was trying to get Uhtred's goat. And then he's like, well, if you don't swear loyalty to Edward, I'm going to have you killed. And Uhtred is just like, haven't I done enough for you, man? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when he pulled the knife on him, and it, it's all went twisted sideways. So there's a there's a lot going into this, and obviously Alfred was in the wrong with that. Like he went too far. He went too far. We all knew it. Yeah. And you can see his motivation. Yeah. Could see his motivation because he's like, oh, here's an opportunity. Maybe I can use to ensure my son is protected until he's crowned king. And Neutra's the best. But, so obviously, yeah. you want him. That's the guy you want. Of course, but of course, it was it was not the right way to do it. It was not right. the right way. There might have been a yeah a, a better way that Uhtred actually may have agreed to. Exactly. Way. So there's the whole outlaw thing. There's a the thing that Alfred wants him. There's a the thing that Uhtred does respect Alfred. Uh, it's it's so great because Alfred Alfred's like everyone will say Uhtred is uh, a heathen, godless, a warrior, loyal. But yeah. And yeah. like and it like turns yeah. it into some compliments and you're like he's oh. like no one will ever say it yeah exactly and then no one will ever speak of utrid the warrior and mm. then utrid's like yeah like oh am i in this chronicle or something and then alfred's like no you're, you're definitely <laughs> not <laughs> and then that's when another great freaking line happens oh my god it will not be written that alfred stood on the on utrid's shoulders but i know it to be true oh my Oh my god. It's like damn when I when he said that because it seemed like he was like he was just roasting him at first. Yeah, it seemed like, like right going. back in like it won't be written that you were, you know, heathen, that you were loyal, that you were, you know. Yeah. And then he comes with that line and then Uhtred's like, damn, like what? And then what? Alfred starts coming at him with a sword, like as feebly as he can with his two hands. And again, you're like, what the hell? Like, is he gonna kill yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's he is he going to try and cover this up or what's <laughs> like so no one yeah, knows? Yeah. 
And uh, he's like, I could kill you now. And Uhtred's like, you definitely couldn't. And first of all, the way Alfred is holding that sword and looking like he couldn't even pierce Uhtred's thick ass skin with those weak ass arms <laughs> right now. He was so weak. But then Uhtred's like, we are bound, you and I. Yeah. I mean, damn. He's just they he's like bound. the same as I couldn't kill you. Like, there's no way yeah. I could kill you. I love you and respect you, know, you and, too much. And, and Alfred's like, I need to sit down. Pour me some ale. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, so they, they sit down. They have a drink together. And they're just chit-chatting. And just so much, so much great stuff is said. You know, he even admits, like, you know, you you even killed a man in in the palace here, and he's like, and I you know I admit there was some, you know, provocation. Yeah, yeah. There's there's, there's always those little moments where Alfred, like, kind of slips back into his old ways, where he's like, "You did this yeah. wrong," and then he's like, "But here's the nuance right. to the situation." Right, right, right. And so you're just yeah. like every time it just gets you like, oh yes, like these are all the things you wanted him to say since season one, right? Like since season one. Yes. You wanted him to, exactly. to acknowledge his stuff. To acknowledge it. Just the acknowledgement. And I think it meant the world to Uhtred too, you know? Yeah. And that's, to what hear that. that's what I'm saying. That's why it's such a great scene because like they're both getting teary eyed, just looking at each other, just like having this talk at they've, they've probably had like this conversation in their heads for yeah. years, right? These characters. So like now they're finally hashing it out and it took him going to the basically he's going to die here you know and this is why there's happened. so much respect for each other i mean they've had so many differences in their lives but there's so much respect for one another you know hmm. and he oh and another big thing is he brings up you know he'll I'll always remember when i handed you my baby boy oh yeah edward and edward and he says um and Esalt. and which is like you remember her and and alfred says always yeah and that and you guy just, too, cause... you could just see that meant so much to utrid too like on his face yeah exactly. even though even though they used pagan rituals to save edward you know which is totally against what alfred <laughs> believes in you know yeah, yeah. but so um, to say he always remembered esalt was so that, that got me too yeah, that was. He gave me great. goosebumps when he said it. Oh my god, there's yeah. so many goosebumps, tear jerker moments here. Um, also, too, just Ellsworth does slip in at one point uh, and see right. that Uhtred's there, and she's pissed. And yeah, yeah. and Alfred's like, "You may leave us." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, classic. And, classic. Uh, and she's just like, "Hey, get all the guards ready!" Like. I'm yeah, she letting, goes to stay up. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not letting this guy out. That doesn't really play into anything here. I mean, it, it yeah, be- ends up another great moment then happens. Probably just puts the cap on everything here. Yeah. Well, well Alfred had you know writ was writing something and he wrote a letter of pardon for Uhtred because Uhtred was like, "Well, I'm an outlaw," and he's like, "No longer." Boom, pardoned Uhtred. Boom, he slams it down, and he's yeah. like. He asked him, can you at least stay here until Edward is crowned king? And, and he's like, like, I don't need an answer. He's like, I don't need an answer. He's like, I just needed to ask. I yeah. just need to ask, which was awesome. Yeah. And then you know? Uhtred's like, is this pardon then conditional on me staying? Right. And he's like, no, this is your pardon. You are free. You're pardoned, which was awesome. Because everything has been conditional. Everything's been conditional. It's just so good. And then he raises a toast for Uhtred too. And it's just, oh my God, it's so good. It's just. The, he says he says to the true Lord of Babenberg. Yes. <sighs> that's that my awesome. bro moment right there, by the way. That's, that's it. That's Obviously. it. It's got to be, right? If if it's not my favorite moment, it's my bro moment. This is yeah. It's it's such a cross up here. Uh, it could be either one. I'm gonna stick it under my best bro moment just so I can give my favorite <sighs> moment to something else. That's also freaking awesome. That happens. Yeah, I, I gotta agree. I gotta probably agree with that. It was. It's if that wasn't the case, this would be my favorite moment. My favorite scene. This was so well done. I love that they took their time with this. That they 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 just killed it. And it like I said, it's the book was good. I, I thought what happened between them was good. This was just yeah. fucking awesome, though. <laughs> I don't was, think what happened in the book was very cinematic. 
It was very cinematic. I don't think it would have played well on the screen. No. Yeah, what they did in the show was fantastic. Well, I don't think Uhtred is a great storyteller either, though. You know what I mean? Like, Because Uhtred is telling the story in there. So right. it, it could have been thematic, but Uhtred's just like, well, yeah, and then, then this happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's awesome. You see him actually like out later than uh, just sitting with Hild. Another great moment between the two of them. Uh, I just love yeah, Hild. That was, was a great babe. moment. And he tells her the line again, you know. <laughs> have I ever told too you? Too good a woman for, yeah. For, have I ever told you you're too good a woman for God alone? Yeah. She's like, ah, once or twice. It's just so good. Yeah. I mean. And then like Ellsworth walks by and and he like holds up Hild's hand and he's like, ah, she's got me in shackles. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and Ellsworth's like, you better watch that hand. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's pretty awesome. By the way, they cut over to, um, you know, the Dane camp at some point here, too. Yeah. I think Brita had confronted Canute. Like, did you hear? People are saying that Ethelwald killed Ragnar. Yeah. And at first, Canute was like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's funny how the, it, it gets like progressively more that he, he knows more. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like, I don't know anything. And she's like, yeah. did he? And he's like, and then like later on, she asks again. I think it may be early the next episode. Well, she think, asks him again. And I think it's all he's like, one yeah. Night. Well, he doesn't let on. He's just like, well, it was in the next episode. He does. Oh, like he they're does? riding on horses later. And, and he's like, uh, he's like, yes, it was Ethelwald. But in this one, he doesn't, this episode, he doesn't really let on. Yeah. 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 They're, they're all trying to get, stay ready for battle. And like, they have all these warriors all together all the time. And uh, this is like the first moment too. I mean, I I end up liking Canute yeah. more uh, later on, but th- most of the season though he's been like kind of a Canute, right? If you just yeah, he's just been shit talking Uhtred. Switch switch a couple letters. He's been like pulling the strings with uh, Ethelwald and stuff, but yeah, we haven't seen you know the true Viking warrior, Canute that. the Beast. Yeah, uh, as Magnus talks about Beast mode. <laughs> yeah, and, Beast and mode, baby. Two talks with him. Um, yeah, great talks. Check them out. Yeah, both. He, uh, he's, they're like, they were trying to tell Canute, like, hey, let's get these men to stop fighting in this giant mosh pit that's going on here. And Canute's like, no, yeah, like Heston they is... need to stay ready. Like, yeah. I don't know, people are getting injured. And he's like, no, they need to stay ready for battle. I can feel it in my balls. <laughs> yeah. And he just goes in and starts throwing haymakers. And he's like beating everybody up. <laughs> of course, what are the rules in that? Like, can you can you punch the chief? Can you That's what I was like. Chief? They were probably like, oh, okay. Oh, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> That's like if like uh Joe Biden did that or something to the <laughs> Secret Service guys. <laughs> they'd have to like, drop, right? They'd have to drop. Like they'd have to let oh, him hit him. You got me, sir. You got me. <laughs> You can't punch him. <laughs> no, but uh, he goes beast mode. Canute is like, okay, Canute, maybe he's got some physicality to him here. Okay. No. And then we cut back to Winchester and Tara's like walking home. Yeah. And one of the guys that hang is hanging out with Ethelwald and his posse, his name's Tiedman, just like starts like being mean to her. Yeah, just, just like, harasses her. He's she like, like uh, comes you're a back Dane. from the market with her stuff. She's on her way home. She's been living in Winchester. She's married to Bayaka, you know. But again, like you mentioned, the tensions are high uh, because of the Dane. So he's like, and know, everyone's afraid Dane. of what's going to happen after Alfred dies. Like, yeah, and he's like, isn't that what you are, a Dane? You know, yeah, he's such a dick. And so anyway, she goes by. She goes home, and she and... handles it well, though. She's like, I just want peace. She like tries to skirt yeah. around him. Aethelwald is actually the one he's like, leave her alone. Um, but then yeah, yeah, he tells him, he's like, if you want to yeah. harass her, just don't get caught. Like, I'm cool yeah, with don't it do otherwise. It in public, don't do it in front of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So you think Aethelwald's being cool, but no, he's, he's, he he's care still a dick. Yeah. And then she actually okay. goes home and she's actually pretty like shaken up. Um, yes. from this. I mean, if you've ever thought about like a time you've had like conflict with someone and even if you like handled it well then, like you get home and you're just like, you're just still in that like fight or flight mode trying to come yeah. down from. And she's like, Tura is like the most nice lady ever, right? I know. And uh, 
so Hild goes over, comforts her, because then... Well, they're having, like, a little powwow. The boys, yeah. I think they're playing Monopoly or something. I know, like, yeah. all my favorite people. I'm like, I want to get in on that it's game like of Monopoly. I want to be on that table. What are you guys doing? I don't even yeah. like Monopoly, and I'll play Monopoly with you guys. <laughs> no, but they're chit-chatting politics and stuff, and, you know, what's going to happen. But they're, you know, all the good, all the boys are around the table, and Hild and stuff. And, yeah, she comes in, she's in the corner, and you're right, Hild is the one who recognizes that she's upset. She then goes Bianca, over and then hubby is just like but then everybody like heads over to her after like they see she's upset like fanning gets up and oh, yeah. Bianca, of course and like they're like what's wrong like they all care about each other so much it's so cool. i know i know i love it these love are the real it. friends you know the friends I you've know. seen you know that's a good it's a it's a good comedy show but um these are the friends these are the friends yeah. i would watch yeah <laughs> 10 12 seasons of yeah <laughs> 14 99 like yes Bianca is like i'm gonna go speak to this team and then and ucha's like we better go Love with it. you and he is on a war path i mean he goes to the area where she got harassed and he's like is any of you people here teedman eighth wall comes out. steps out yeah he's like there no there's no teedman around here <laughs> and then uh so uh, you i knew you would be involved in this somehow he's like, like and then of course teedman getting such an idiot up. And he's yeah, like, yeah, this, is a, this is a place for all people, is what he says. Like, this is a kingdom for all people here. And uh, he like, stands up and he's like, I'm he's Tiedman. Like, well, know. what gets him to stand up is Bianca's like, or any of you coward, is any of you a coward named Tiedman? And then he's like, I'm not a coward. And yeah, that's, I'm not that's a what coward. Makes him stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much like, you know, you better stay clear of my wife, you know. And he's like, what? I just called her Dane. Is that not what she is? Yeah. Like, he's like, he's, I think uh, Tiedman's like, uh, are you speaking to me as as a priest or as a man? You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. basically saying like, we, if you're gonna keep insulting me, like I'll fight you. Then, like, uh, the only reason you're safe is because you're a priest from my my deadly wrath, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like, what is Bayaka even gonna say back to that? <laughs> Headbutt, baby! Oh man. <laughs> And and what makes this great? I mean, the headbutt is fantastic headbutt, and it's so like unexpected. Oh my god! Um, and what's fantastic about it is it shows like a real clip, uh, like quick clip of like Uhtred, Finnan, and Citric, and Uhtred's like, oh, back to the boys. He's like, you just see that? Like like the background of like one of those like burn like gifs where like yeah. the guy drops the line and the rest <laughs> of the people are like, oh, like that was Uhtred. Edwin again like oh shit. and then they like go and get in front of Bayaka. they like then run and like pull him back and stuff and he's like i'm calm i'm calm <gasps> wham <laughs> he like goes and then lands a haymaker and they have to pull him back it is awesome that was awesome just an unbelievable moment from ian hart there he, he wasn't even supposed to hit that actor like <laughs> they just yeah they that just was kept just... the cameras rolling you know that yeah was exactly <laughs> But there's so many things make that scene great. I mean, Ian Hart's performance and the satisfaction that this jerk just got oh, beat up from God, what a dick. Um, picking on Tura, right? And we and, all know a guy like that, too. Like, when you confront them about what they were doing, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, yeah. it, was, it was just a game. I didn't do anything wrong. And he's, I think and, he says, like, I just called her a Dane. Is that not what she is? You know? Yeah. And Bianca's and, just like, she is like, like he's like, did you not understand me, you dumb ass? Like I'm not. Yeah, he's I'm like, not trying to word yeah. debate you. I'm just saying, stay away from my wife. I'm saying, stay away from my wife. Period. That's it. End of discussion. Yeah, he says something like, you don't seem like. What did he say? You don't seem like the smart type or or something. Something like, like that. that. That's not what he said, but it was like something like that. Yeah. And, yeah, it was so fantastic. And he goes to Ethelwald. He's like, you know, you're the one here stirring things up. You know, the, the words you're spewing. You're getting people riled up here. And and yeah. Eighthwald is trying to cause divisiveness. Yeah. He wants people to be against Edward, to have to stop trusting the 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 power here, so that they all want to rile behind him. Exactly. Bianca leaves. Uh, Uhtred's about to leave, and then uh, Eighthwald's like, "Hey, come in. Let's talk. Let's uh, scheme a little bit." Then here, and, and Uhtred almost leaves, but he goes in, and they they have like a brief discussion where Uhtred then is like. They're like basically Sigurd is just like whose side are you on here, Utred? And Utred yeah. is not letting on. It's because the whole time you're thinking that's another thing you talked with Hild earlier was like I feel yeah, like yeah. I don't have a purpose. I don't like who am I with? The the Danes don't want me. Uh, 
Aylesworth and the rest of the Saxons here, the priests, they don't want me. So who am I supposed to fight for? I'm not even an outlaw. And here again, they're like, whose side are you on? I think that's the catalyst for him to, de to decide then, like, I have to be on someone's side. Right. Uh, because then later, uh, Alfred's on his deathbed and Uhtred comes in uh, and he's just like, I will stay until Edward is king. It, it's, I think that was the, the moment Alfred was waiting for before he right. left. You know what I mean? He had yeah. said to Uhtred earlier, like, I should have died back when they're first meeting at the, the beginning of this right. episode. I should have died like so long ago, but I think the only thing I was staying here for was so that this meeting could happen. Right. But I think this was the moment then that he was waiting for was for Utrid to come in and promise uh, because then he sort of fades out again. And then Ellsworth is just there just like scheming about like, how can we kill Utrid? Like what, 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 what's way are we going to do it? Can you just yeah, yeah, yeah. tell me real quick? Like it's okay. And, uh, and then he just sort of fades out. And uh, this, I was kind of sad about that. This was like oh his God. last moments with his wife. You know what I mean? Fin again, again, John Loon and I, Ava were um, actually maybe just John Loon with this one. I think it's just John Loon here, but I don't, you know, I don't think Ava was. Ivor's in the Ivor's like just like Ivor. chomping at the gates here. He's like, I want in on this one. Like, a, it's it's like a such an amazing horse. moment. <laughs> just like really cool music starts playing and uh, it starts swelling, getting more intense. And Alfred is reaching for his wife. You know, her hand was there a minute ago. He wants to be holding on to her hand. Mm -hmm. She's just bitching about Uhtred over at the other thing. And he's just like, he says, my England. Yeah. He dies. And it, it's just, I guess got goosebumps right now. I just got goosebumps. By the way, we love Eliza. We love her. But Ellsworth right here is being a bitch. I mean, just like your husband is dying. Like I, I can see her point of view here. You know, she's worried about her son. She's worried about the possibility of Uhtred and his selfishness. And he kicked her husband right in his gut right. when he has this, this deathly bout is I can see where she's come from. But in this moment, like right. you've just got to be there for, for your other person here. And she turns around and I think she regrets it. I think Ellsworth did regret that because she realized, you know, this was his moment. I missed his last moment. Yeah. Because I was so caught up in all this. Yeah. Um, she even uh, sends for Bia father Bianca. He comes in. And oh, he's, cool moment here too. Cool moment. But he, he even says to her then, like, at least you're with him here in his final moments. And she, like, yeah. I think she was <laughs> kind of like, like <laughs> I was kind of yeah. over there just like complaining the whole time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when she leaves, then it's just a great moment with Bianca and Alfred then. Oh, know? yeah. Bianca like kisses him on the head and God's king, you know, for him. And he's like, I, I can't wait to see you again. And so and I loved can, you. Or like uh, you got to remember too. Like his home was Bevenbur too with Uhtred, and the reason yeah, he yeah. he left was because of Elfrich and what he thought was wrong there happening. But then, you know, he found Alfred, and that was like his person then, his life. Yeah. After yeah. that, so that was like, so that was just another great moment. Uh, Absolutely. I'd say the only thing I wish would have happened was that I think they could have put another cap on was Osforth, right? Like they do in the book. Like they do in the book, right? Again, not to talk too much about the book again, but that was that was well, one little thing. I was just like, after I read I the didn't book, think about I was it like, until I read the book. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't think about it until after. But I read there the are, book. if you watch this show, though, there are a little lot of little moments where, like, when Alfred looks at Uhtred when he comes back in to ask for the army the first time in Mercia, when uh, when Alfred wasn't going to be at the approximation to the Witten, he shows up and he looks at his gaze kind of falls on Osforth really quick, his bastard son. And there's kind of like a weird look there, you know, like yeah. a weird acknowledgement sort of like kind of thing. And then, yeah. And there's another moment too, where Edward comes over and talks to Uhtred, like I'll hear, I'll help you out sort of thing. And then Osforth gets up and leaves because right. Edward had sat down. He's jealous about that's like the rightful son then, you know what I mean? So I, Right, right, right. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more Osforth, yeah, Alfred stuff nice before he left. There. Yeah, yeah. It would have we'll been... talk more about the differences with Alf, Al, Osforth in the books and the show in our book talks. Yeah. When we get there. But yeah, I agree with you. That's one little thing. You. Just I didn't think about that when I watched it, though. I didn't right. think about it. Right. So anywho, though, Alfred's dead. The Danes are partying now. Like, yeah, 
for real this time he's dead because they <laughs> thought he was dead before so and, um, i didn't just I see like, it on facebook this time like <laughs> yeah like um i think canute's like uh how, do we know for sure this time <laughs> and i think dagfin is like heston's like dagfin tell him and i was like dagfin the fact checker here uh, fact checker. yeah yeah he, but he's like even the priests are saying it. he's saying you know like so they're ready this is them then they're they're gonna get on their move to go take wessex Ellsworth starts like cleaning house like immediately. She's just like she sees Bianca's loyal to Uhtred. He's got this Dane wife, even though he's pious. Like that shit ain't enough for her. She's just like yeah. so. After the funeral, you can that shit slightly ain't, that shit slightly ain't Christian. That shit slightly <laughs> just slightly ain't Christian. Shit, like ninety eight percent Christian. <laughs> and then she also tries to rescind the pardon of Uhtred. Yes. Which Bianca is like, I would not do that. That's like your your husband's like dying action was to yes. pardon him. Like that's not a good idea. Yeah. So they do have the funeral. Bianca is a part of it. Bianca even warns Uhtred. He's like, you should leave because um, she's she wants she's going to arrest you. She rescinded the pardon, and Uhtred is basically like, I told Alfred I'd stay, <sighs> even even if they did that, I have to stay. Yeah. What a man! Oh, Uhtred is such an awesome freaking dude. And it's uh, it's funny too because I th- I think it was either this one or the next one where they're like it seemed like Alfred was making trying to have you make a simple promise for just staying in town, but it turns out this was going to be a big task, right? And yeah. The, and Utra's just like the bastard thinks, you know, and that's what Leofrich, yeah. you know, said to him right, back right. in season one. Right. Um, so he ends up, they, they go to the funeral then. Owlsworth actually does have Siapa take Uhtred away, lock him up in prison. Uh, Finn, and, Finn and Doug, to a quick little bro moment, tries to like, he's like, hey, Siapa, what's going on? Like, tries to stop him. Yeah. They pin him to the wall, though, and they take him to prison. Uhtred's like, listen, just stop, you know. Yeah. He just Let me go. And... and Tura cannot catch a freaking break. Of she's course, at the, the funeral, the guy she stands in front of at the funeral here happens to be freaking Teedman. You know, saw he seeks head. her out even maybe. I don't know. Maybe like, suck but... Her out. but so he ends up harassing her, just like shoving her in the back this whole time. Uh, so she ends up leaving. Like, I was just thinking in my head, why don't you go over to Citric or something? But, I mean, she's probably just worked up, right? She's worked up. She couldn't think. So she just wanted to get out of there. It was it's scary for her. She should have been, she should have just went over and been like, hey, dangerous warriors who love me, this this impotent dude here is picking on me. Can you just fuck him up I real know. quick? Uh, and I wish. And is not there because he was he's basically like, he's with like, you can, yeah, you can lead the ceremony, but you, after that, you're done. You know, you're fired. Yeah. You're fired. But Tara is running home, fast walking home, and Tiedman is like, the only two people in town. Everybody you know. else at that funeral. Those tickets sold out like that for that <laughs> funeral. Oh my god! I mean, it's the death of a king. You know, that is death of king. These times must have been it's just huge. That was some shit to do. So anyway, throwing apples at her. He's like chasing her down. She runs in. She bars the door. He's like knocking on it, and he's like threatening her now. She goes and she has her little hidey hole because he ends up breaking in. And he's looking around and he's like, I don't know. She's not here. I guess she ain't here. And she just like gasps for a second or like takes a breath real quick. Yeah. And he and he heard her. Figures out where she is. So he like crouches on over her. I think he like starts a fire. He like I think grabs he'd already like a, started a fire. Maybe at this yeah, point. He, yeah. Well, he like grabs something to start the fire and he just throws it on the floor. Right next to the hidey hole. He like crouches down next to her, you know, getting real close and creepy. And then she ends up, she stabs him. She kills him. And you're just like, oh, thank God she killed him. But then except he's he right. He's a pretty freaking big dude. His his head is just so full of rocks weighing it down you know? here. <laughs> she can't move. Oh, that's what, I think that's what Bayaka said. I, you don't you don't seem like the cleverest of men. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's funny too. Even Aethelwald kind of burns him. Like when he first told him to go away, he's like, yeah. uh, he's like, your head is empty or something, or or it's useless. Yeah, his head, or, yeah, his head is, and he's like, yeah. it's it's no, it's not. It's useful or something. He's like, yeah, it'd be useful for a bucket because <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. how empty it is. Speaking of burn, he, 
<laughs> Speaking of burns. Oh, oh. I like that joke. I'm sorry, everybody. I know this is a part that Last Kingdom fans hate. We hate this. I don't like it. E- I really don't like this either. It's tragic. Tura cannot push the door open because Tiedem is on it and her house is burning. And that's pretty much where the episode ends. She's stuck there, burns. And uh, I think it, she doesn't technically die till the next one, but she dies. We'll talk about how she dies in a second. It just sucks because I, when we were watching this, you know, when the seasons came out, I think there might have been a year or two between seasons two and three. Uh, but for us, this was like all right. within the, the span of a month when we were binging it on Netflix <laughs> oh back my God, in yeah. 2018, I think. So, like, I had just felt like we had just won done home. Uh, I know. And I got know. Torah. You know what I mean? And I felt like that was like one of the big things, you know, on Utrid's, you know, checklist, how I was talking about is for things to do was to get back Torah. I mean, that was back from the first episode of season one. And then for her to die, man, it was just like when I first saw this, I was just like, oh my God, it freaking like this sh- season is like just killing off everyone I love. And I know. Uh, because Ragnar, Ragnar died. And Altura, Altura, and Alfred. Gisla. Gisla died in like one of the first episodes. Oh my god. So like when I first saw the season, it was so dark and all these twists and turns and stuff. I was just I don't want to say I definitely didn't hate it. I still ended up by by the end, I was like, I love this this season. At the time, I was just like, 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 what are they doing right now? I just feel like the more I watch it, the more I realize that this I think this is my favorite season. Yeah. It's just so amazing. I mean, I mean, we'll, we'll talk more about it some other time. But I mean, this one, this one is so good. You know, after rewatching it and stuff, there's so many great things. Like I said, uh, last yeah. season from Stephen Butcher too coming in. Uh, this is probably the most cinematic. I think definitely. Uh, I just I love the I do like the dark tone and the winter and everything. It all just works so well yeah. with what goes on. But at the time, I just hated this. I was like Tora. The most perfect Not lady terror. ever. It seems so unnecessary, right? Yeah. That's that's the end of episode nine. Then, what's your best bro moment? Then, Colby, best bro moment. I, I got to agree with what you said earlier. It's got to be the Alfred and Uhtred moment, and you know the pardon. Yes, the, the cheers is probably it. Just that whole scene to me is it's got to be because th- these guys were like they're bound since episode two. They've been bound. Yeah so it's amazing um and and to put a kind of a cap on david dawson's performance utrecht alfred bro talk awesome same that's same like i said that that would have been my favorite moment i don't think there's anything that even close as far as a bro moment goes that even comes close to that so it like it had to take that and uh there's also another great moment i what's what's your favorite moment then what's your favorite it's probably going to be the same same as you i'm assuming yeah. But it's definitely when Bayaka went out and confronted Tiedman with a headbutt. Is that what yours is? That's mine. That's mine. Uh, it's got to be because, I mean, he just headbutts him. Then, then he gets up again, knocks him out again. Like you said, the reaction with Utrecht and gang oh, like, man. oh, shit. An <laughs> awesome moment. That was so great. Yeah, it was so great. That's episode, episode nine. nine. Last One episode more. of season three, episode 10. Yep. This one starts with, you know, the funeral is ending. They, they find out about the fire. People are trying to put the fire out and it's already like raging at this point. Like there's already like no sense in going in the building because like it's like it's bad. Yeah. And you just see them so, like throw buckets on there and like this thing is just enormous. <laughs> just like what's a bucket going to do? Yeah. So, like that thing is missed by the time it gets there. I think I we talked to when we talked to, to Arnis. Who was, you know, when they filmed that, I think they had, I think he said it was a real fire or him or Mark. One of them said like it was so hot, like being so close to it, I think. Yeah, I bet. I don't know if it was that building, but I think they did have some sort of real fire going on. But it's crazy. Oh, man. And and it's just your heart is burning inside because Tura is stuck there. And Bayaka had was having some kind of confrontation with Aylesworth again, where she's about to be mean to him again. And purely comes in is like, oh, you're going to be needed right now you know, your house is on fire and Bayaka runs up. This is not happening. This is not happening. No. And he is distraught. He is. I can't, you know, how can you blame him? He knows his wife is in there. Yeah. You know, 
and he's like, I'm here, Tara, I'm here. Oh my you know? god. Yeah, they're they're holding him back. Was, and he's just like, I'm here, like to like comfort her. You know what I mean? God damn. And it's at that brutal. moment they show Tara in the in the hole and she takes the knife, the dagger out of Tiedman. And she she does what her own basically what her father had done to her mother, but she kills herself. Mm. Remember when they were burning? There's a little bit, I guess, of poetic uh, justice to it because that's kind of the same way her family burned. Ironic. And so she, it's a little irony there. And so she kills herself. And I guess that's better than burning to death, right? And it's more honorable for their religion, too. Yeah. Yeah. And she even even mentioned it earlier, like, why doesn't Alfred just kill himself then if he does, if he suffers? Oh, yeah. She mentions that earlier. It's just funny because she's like, that's what a Dane would do if, like, yeah, sword if it was Dane like would a do hindrance. That. And if that was like a hindrance. It's such a big cultural was, was, difference. Like, the Saxons yeah. and the Christians is like, well, if you kill yourself, you can't get to heaven then, right? So, yeah. But the way she looked at it is like, well, all these problems are, are being caused because Alfred's about to die. Hmm. And uh, why doesn't he just kill himself and get it over with? And, you know, <laughs> No, there's no more unrest. So yeah, Makes some other her. foreshadowing, I guess, there too. She she goes out a Dane way. Uh, I again, I hated that it happened to her. It's awesome she was able to control some of it. You know what I mean? And uh, Ian Hart, yeah. everyone else, just oh my god, just making me feel terrible things. Um, oh. And then seeing him sit. Why there do they have too, to be such good actors? <laughs> I know. Oh. Oh my and God, then Ian. when it's all said and done, you know, it's over, the fire is done, the house is burned down, mm. Hild is there comforting Bayaka first. Finnan comes over and he's like, come on, let's, you know, here. maybe and, glass and, of ale, bud. Like, yeah, glass of ale, like just trying to be a bro to Bayaka any way you can. He's like, when everything's cooled down, he's like, I will go get her body. And Bayaka's like, no, 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 she's my wife. Oh my and Finnan doesn't argue with that. He's like, you're right. He's like, I'll help you then. Yeah. Or we'll help you then that will help you then it's just and like you said finn coming in as a bro there but then biak is like one man just didn't do this this is a result of like this all this this hate going on through town and yeah yeah like this is a this this wasn't just one idiot or it just wasn't an accident or or something something along those lines yeah um so we cut then to ethelwald ethelred is also there with alhelm Sickerbreed, Ethelred, who has been basically an extension of Wessex ruling Mercia, uh, right? Wants to not decree. necessarily because he wanted to be. No, I think he he wants to be his own king. Yeah, he wants that's to be why king. he's there of in Mercia. discussion with Ethelwald because he's then considering after Alfred's been killed here that he's going to announce yeah. Mercia is its own kingdom. He's king, and and that's another thing we've kind of glanced over the last couple of episodes is that. Ethelred had had ordered um, Aldhelm to you know call for men because we need more men if I'm going to pronounce myself king. Yeah, I need some Aldhelm, guards. and Aldhelm is like fully converted to being loyal to Ethelflood and not Ethelred, and he's like still Ethelred's man, and he just won't do it. And the first time Ethelred is like, you know, I've noticed you make it, you're making a habit of this, mm-hmm. of you know disobeying me. Like I know you have eyes for my wife, you know. He goes to his room one time and he's like, you know, I still haven't done it. He goes tattles on himself. <laughs> I know. Why is he doing that? <laughs> like, by the way, by I, the way do Lord, I, st- I didn't do that thing. <laughs> and I, th- he's always been for Mercia. Outhelm, though. He's always Aldhelm. been for Mercia. I, don't, I, I can't tell, like what you said, he definitely loves Ethelfled. I, I think, though, part of it, though, is too in his head. He's like, we need those oh, men yeah. in Mercia to protect Mercia in case Danes go there. Right. Like, why don't we don't need to be wasting right. as many men trying as to tell possible that to Ethelred. Yeah. Right. And Ethelred has been discrediting him every time. And uh, you know, he's every Beth and Mercia, as you know, as we, we talked to James North. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um but anyway, James so Northcote, yeah. they're all there though, so you can read them. And like anytime there's like a political scene going on, conspiring scene, it's normally just that, right? It's normally just this political scene. They're talking about evil doings and things like that, and they're cutting back and forth. They're scheming. Uh, Althelm's like, "What makes you think like we're gonna lose to the Danes? You know, like we don't have to team up with them. We might win." And they're they're going back and forth. Aethelwald's like, "We need to team up with the Danes. Come on, let's team up with the Danes. It'll be so cool. It'll be so fun." Uh, then all of a sudden, and... just this wide shot, right? And Bianca just comes scrolling in. 
<laughs> with an axe, and he just slams it on the table. The boards go like flying up. Listen to our talk with Harry uh, McIntyre. He has a funny story about about how he had to be careful which side of the table he was sitting on with the prosthetic eye because That's the boards right, he flew up. See. Bayaka has had it, and he's pretty much calling out Ethelwald here. You know, he's like, "I know you were behind this," and if not directly you know. the words and the bile yeah. you spill. Yes, um, it's such a great moment because, like I said, like normally the scheming scenes are scheming scenes. There's political things, and then there's action yeah, yeah. stuff, right? But then, like we've got this scheming scene that all of a sudden, <sighs> whap. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Just it's, introducing myself. That's amazing. all I'm doing. Yep. I'm here. Just introducing myself. <laughs> that was awesome. But you know, and yeah. Ethelwald is like, you need to settle down. I think Ethelred is the one that orders him, like, you need to leave now. Yeah, he's like, I'll forgive it this one time. They go to a scene with um Uhtred is down in the prison. And I think Ethel fled came in at first, mm -hmm. you know, and, like saying, I don't know like why this is happening. And basically what happens is Bayaka comes in, right? And he's looking really distraught. And Uhtred is like, what's wrong? And Bayak is going off like, you need to stand for everything that Alfred built and like, and everything you helped build. You need to stand for it now more than ever. Um, and Uhtred's like, there's a change in you. And Bayak finally is like, Terra is with God now or the gods. With To me, was a truly powerful line from Bayaka, this devout Christian, to say, to admit that, you know, it, I think it's a comfort to him and he knows to her that maybe she's with her gods, even though yeah, he really only believes in one God. It shows how much so he that loved. was a huge kind of thing for him to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's such um, an emotional. And obviously, that's Uhtred's half sister. I mean, that's Uhtred's, you know, and he, that's pretty much Uhtred's sister, sister to right? Him. So, like, they're not blood, but it's that's a sister to him. That sister. Right. And so this is Tim getting the news too. And, it, and he says, you know, that she died in a fire. And he said, set by good Christian men, no doubt. Ooh. You know, Ooh. With a kind of a sarcastic. Like, Stirred some doubt in uh, Bianca, who, who's never been an ironic yeah, yeah, yeah. or a, a paradox Christian. He's always been, know. you know, someone who's, who is the person who wants to do good. I mean, that the, Again, what he, makes he was even annoying early in season one. He was he, he was, was a little annoying in season one. If you remember early in season one, it was like, ah, come on, stop with the Christian stuff. Yeah. But uh but with him and Turta, I mean, him stepping up to Turta when she had the hungry dogs, man. I mean, that's like the pinnacle of like oh. like showing like what a good dude he is, right? And that he's not yeah. He's not uh he's not just saying it, you know, he's he's living it. So uh, yeah, it means a lot coming from him then when he's saying that line. It's such an awesome moment. He's like, There will be a trial, you know, you will be heard because I think that's what Ethel Flood and Utrid were talking about. Yeah, you know, that like I think Ellsworth wanted her to be wanted him to be killed, but she like talked her out of it. And yeah, um, basically, Bianca is like, I will stand with you, Utrid, at you know, you will be heard. They do like a head touch through the bars, the head touch Come moments. On are always just so powerful. I mean, there's there's the iconic shot I think they use like as the thumbnail for uh like season 4 now with Uhtred and Ethelfled. But Ethelfled. I mean there's so many. Yeah, yeah. Uh, iconic head touches, you know, like it's always just so so emotional. I mean, this was this was just yanking yeah. at me, man. It's my tummy all warm and fuzzy. Tummy all warm and fuzzy. And like we it. said then they they do cut then to Ethelred and Outhelm, like we told you uh, again, he's just like, did you not summon my guards still? And now I'm like, nope. <laughs> like, like, I could just lie, yeah. but like, I don't. And uh, he's like, all right, well, stabby stab. And uh, stab stabby him. stab. And it was this was pretty shocking. This was very shocking. And he basically, he's, he's like, you will not disobey me again. Like, he's like, if, if you, you survive live this, this came, <laughs> if you live, this came from an alehouse brawl. You know? <laughs> Like what if I live? Like you just stabbed me in the, <laughs> the ninth century. Like I'm as good as dead. <laughs> if the wound doesn't kill me, the infection uh, will. I don't know. This is like a little shank. A little shank. A little shank. Like a little, little mercy shank. shank. He does then go to Aethelfled then later on. Yeah, in uh, her room. 
Yeah. And he's just like, Hey, patch me up if you can. Uh, and he basically tells her he loves her. He's like, you know, I've, yeah. I've come to really care for you. He, he's kind of dropped some hints, but he, it kind of comes clean there. And she's yeah. just like, am I like someone else? She doesn't say it, but like, <laughs> he's like, well, I'm going to die anyway. So I might as well tell her. And she's like, you're not going to die. He's like, oops, <laughs> you know, that st- stuff I said about loving you and <laughs> forget it, forget it. <laughs> You know, we we know what happens in season four and everything. And if you've seen the trailer, you, you might know. But uh, we in season three, though, we we have no idea if he lives or dies after this. I mean, it, it seemed like. Right, right. It was up in the air. Like it could go either way. Then what happens is they let Uhtred out of his cell. And they, they say, you need to leave. Uh, like, we won't kill you, but you got to go. You can't come back. And that's sort of the compromise for Ailsworth. You don't get to right. kill him, but you don't have to see him again. Uhtred kind of takes it moment and I, I think Uhtred at the beginning of the season would have been like all right thank god I can leave these freaking pious people these hypocrites I'm yeah. finally free right like he's he's been wanting it out right from defending the people who dislike him forever yeah. and then he sees Leia Fritch Leia Frick's, like ghost that he like yeah. the vision of him in the crowd and this is again one of my favorite yeah. scenes from again the, from the whole show like uh, I know, Adre carries this scene. I mean, just kills it. Basically, they have like an out in the public sort of Witten going on here. And yeah, goddamn, we love Wittens. Uh, but this oh, it's, is like, it's a public Witten. It's an awesome public Witten. This is like the best Witten ever. A flash, a flash Witten. Flash Witten. Like a flash mob, a flash dance and stuff is a flash Witten. <laughs> flash Witten. <laughs> Everyone comes out ready to Witten. You know, he he had kind of turned around with the parchment in hand, talking like, you know, I did have a part in mm. for, to Edward. He's talking to Edward, you know, is your father's dying wish, you know, that I was pardoned. And and he says a line like like obviously like we had our differences, but it, it was never less than an honor to serve him. He he goes, it's Yeah, like, oof. It's so good. There, there's a moment where he says like on the chronicles look at that i'm on every page and Ailsworth is like hell no you're not like you're not even mentioned once she says he's like just ask any of the warriors anyone there and then all the people there right they know Utrid. Yeah. they know who yeah, the hell yeah, this yeah. guy is. he's got reputation for days yes he does and he's like i'm on every page from the somerset marches marches to ethenton and beyond man i'm there every moment yeah. and like Ivar and John Luna just like chomping at the bit. They're just like, hmm, hmm. they're just ready to just ready to unleash yeah. that that <laughs> that flash that, out, yeah. That that or- orchestra <laughs> piano music and the and her just vocals, right? They're just ready to go. Yeah, and as soon as I think, as soon as you see like Leia Fritch, I think that's when the music like hits hard there, yeah. uh, like or it starts to build there. And and when Utrid, he's like. He like comes to a realization, like why he does want to stay and help Wessex, right? And he's like, right. And it's for Alfred, right? He he says, and it's I think it's even a line from the first book, like the opening of the first book when he's talking about Alfred. It's like I loved him and I despised him, you know. But yeah. I I never did anything more than respect him, you know. And it was a, yeah, it was but I respect. It was, it was never yeah, it was never less than an honor to serve him. Oh my god. I just got chills. I just got chills. Oh, such an amazing moment. Oh, my God. And I love, too, how basically they're asking Edward to make the decision. You know, the decision is yours, Edward, whether I, you know, go or, you know, should I stay or should I go? Should I stay or should I go? Or should I go? Should if I, I stay, go? there will be trouble. <laughs> and if I go, there will be, be double. double. Wow, this song is, they're so accurate. <laughs> That song actually is very accurate. This, this moment scene actually inspired that <laughs> song. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Ethelwald, meanwhile, is like every time they're like, "The decision is yours, Edward." Ethelwald's <laughs> like, "No, it's not." <laughs> like, why? <laughs> like, why isn't it mine? Like, I was the son of the king. He says he is just as rightful as heir as I am, and everyone's like, "Shut up!" <laughs> <laughs> and Edward's like, well, "If you were pardoned." Why didn't the king announce it? And Uhtred again looks at Leia Fritch and Ivar and John and Luna just like, should we let it go a little bit more? And, and Uhtred's like, the bastard thinks. The bastard thinks. After he, he looks at Leia Fritch, he's like, I had my, my old friend, Leia Fritch. Many, many of you will remember. 
my yeah. old friend Leia Fritch and used to say of Alfred, the bastard thinks. Like the crowd yeah. laughed after he said that. Yeah. Um, yeah, they all like nodded like, yeah, Leia Fritch, Leia Fritch. Like he wanted this and, to happen. He wanted people to see this. He wanted to force Edward to make a king decision. He didn't want it to yeah. just happen. He wanted him to have to decide. This is just yep. as important for Edward as the as the moment when they were out at battle and if you yes. had to lead the charge or not. Like this is just as important. You have to you have to be able to lead the men and you have to be able to call a decision that's tough. That's going to influence how people react, right? Absolutely. And it's so freaking good. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Edward ends up saying, you know, he walks toward I find the pardon to be true and i like how stayapa is like relieved yeah, he's... by this you know and he gives him back his sword and stuff mm-hmm. and he's like i think Uchard asked for it back and, and stayapa is happy to give it back to him which remember stayapa like wants to be at this point in the show like i feel like stayapa does want to be friends with Uchard and a bro to Uhtred and they're and they definitely in the books have a a certain relationship i think it's a little different in the show yeah they definitely respect but, like, each other as warriors they respect his, each other as bros I don't think it, it like was very joyful for Stayapa to like arrest Uhtred. No, I don't. I don't think he's, he's just doing his job. You know, he's more loyal to, to Alfred. And there's a, there's a great answer from again. I, we keep plugging our other talks, but there's a great yeah, answer but... from Adrian Boucher as to why. Because we were thinking the same thing. It was like, do you think he would join Uhtred? Um, yeah, if he could. And he's like, he gave like a perfect answer. So yeah, uh, check it out. Definitely check that out. But. And don't think we're going to tell you what it is here, so you we don't have to go watch you. it there. <laughs> but it is, it is. I mean, it is good. <laughs> Biak is like, Uhtred, what are you going to do the rest of the episode? And Uhtred's like, I'm going to kill those days. <laughs> go kill those days, motherfucker. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, he's like, where will your path lead? And he's like, you know, I, I think someday my path will lead me to Bebenberg. But for now, I'm going to stay here and serve Edward. And um, yeah, so let's get ready to rumble, people. Let's get ready gotta... to rumble. So they start sending letters out. They're like, we need to get people going, riled up for this fight. He talks to Sigabreed. Sigabreed's like leaving. He's like, you're leaving tonight? Mm. And Sigabreed's like, I got to go raise an army. And Uhtred's like, well... You know, I hope you're with us. You know, he's like, we really need the men of Kent. Um, you know, we really need the men of Kent to win this battle. And right now, we're not really sure where Sigabrit's what he's gonna do. Yeah. So you're gonna be with Ethelwald. And- well, he he did tell Ethelwald then before he left. He was like, I will be with you. I'll join the battle later, so I can come in from the rear yeah, and attack yeah. the Saxons that way. And Ethelwald's like, all right, cool, cool, cool. And he's like, I gotta get out of here. I'm going back to the Danes. I'm going to let them yeah. know then I finally got. And that's why Canute sent him back because, because he was doubting whether or not their, their army was going to hold. And then if Alfred was going to die, you know, they had lost Heston's yeah. army. So he's like, you need to get us a Sax army. You need to go and do, I like, I don't care if you right. get killed or not. Like you bring us back a Sax army. So he's going back and he does rejoin the Danes. Um, Uhtred and gang, they have a pretty cool like strategy meeting with Edward where it's like the first time it's like this is like yeah. Alfred's position right now with Uhtred and, and Finnan. And you yeah. can tell he's like he's like Ethelred's right, there too, and Ethelred's, Ethelred's kind of being like devil's advocate, like and he's kind of like, Why am I gonna give you guys my men? You know, yeah. and I think he doesn't um, join. I think he says, like, I'm not yeah. sending my men to he doesn't. slaughter. Yeah, he doesn't. But Ethelred doesn't, does. but yeah. I mean Mercia does. Ethelfled oh. leads Mercia. Oh, that's right. That's right. But not not on Ethel Ethelred's charge. That's right. But yeah, at the end of the meeting, you know, Edward and or Uhtred and Finnan are there, and they're just kind of giving Edward some tips. You know, like what I would do. <laughs> I mean, if I were you, <laughs> is I would like while they're traveling, let's cut them off in the woods. And <laughs> no, but I think Finnan like comes up with like the area, like it could be a good place. You know, like mm. at these woods and. So they come up with a plan and they start dispersing the men. Um, also, to be awkward too, it's just like, oh my! I God. need a part of the. I need to be a part of this battle. I need to fight until I can fight no more. I need it's an like axe, I need an axe, <laughs> sword, a shield, and him and Utrecht have another great like bro hug there, just like yeah. And then like you can just tell like after they like 
stop the hug like Bjork is just like ready to go like he's just like he's just rage mode let's go oh my god because he has been in battles but he i think he's only had a club most of the time he he threw the spear in season one but i think he had only ever used a club yeah Um, so now he's ready to kill he's ready to kill some dudes he's ready to go so he owed they go out and then it like you know Kind of going back and forth, shows Ethelwald traveling a little bit. He rejoins with the Danes. And it also had that scene where Brita and Canute are on the horses after they had heard that Alfred was really dead. And Brita asks Canute, like, is, uh, um, is Ethelwald really the one who killed Ragnar? And Canute is like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he is. He's the guy. Um, so Brita now has the answer. Brita is in on Uhtred with their plan to get Ragnar from Niefel- Niflheim to Valhalla. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so needed, now she he doesn't have the blood though to do it. Right? right. So we have all these puzzle pieces. We have all the pieces now. Mm-hmm. We need to get Uhtred to know it, you know, and we need Uhtred to know it. We need the blood there. The blood. We need Aethelwald so, there. So then it cuts to um, Uhtred sitting around the campfire with like Osfurth. Trick Finnan, Edward, uh, Bayaka, and they're just chit chatting. And Uhtred's like, Is the blood safe? And Osforth like shows the like um, water canister. Yeah, it's like a water like, skin bag, drink water bag. Of. And yeah, and I was just thinking, how many times did Osforth like think, Oh, I'm thirsty? thirsty. Oh, wrong one. Wrong, wrong one. <laughs> 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 just, just, just see if anyone noticed too. Just like, <laughs> It's really cool too. The yeah, like kind of looks perfect. at it like, like that's the last of my wife right there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's like Tura's blood. Yeah, yeah. He just like kind of gives it a look, and he's like, well, he, well, he says it. he's like that's Tura's blood, mm. and he's like, yeah, and he's like, and that will get Ragnar to um, I don't know if he said Valhalla or heaven, yeah, or, or that'll save Ragnar's soul or something. Yeah. And Richard's like, yes, you it's, know, he explains it. Yeah, it's cool how he's. Uh, he's he's in on it now right like this is like yeah the last thing turta did i guess um so he wants to honor that too and uh, yeah Aethelwald, osworth even says he blessed the blood too that's right yeah yeah Wall does show up back with the danes uh brita kind of confronts him but again she can't she can't kill him or anything yeah yeah she does tell jackdaw though go with the spies who are going to go spy on the saxon army and then deliver the message to Uhtred. Yep. Um, and the spies get killed. Yeah. So I'm thinking like Jackdaw like knows his stuff. Like he's I'm gonna wait for them guys to get killed. I'm not gonna <laughs> travel with them. And then he comes out with a branch. Symbol of uh-huh. peace. And it's like Citric and Citric sees him and they take him in. Jackdaw goes up to Uhtred and Uhtred's like, hey Jackdaw. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's like, I have a message from Breed to Lord. He's like, go ahead and say it. And Jackdaw is like, oh, if only if you swear you won't kill me. Am I, am I to be spared? And Uhtred's like, yeah, you'll be spared. Mm. No problem, big dog. I got you. And he's like, he said, she said Ethelwald, Lord. That's it. Ethelwald. Oh. And the look on Uhtred's face. <sighs> and I'd be th- if I was Uhtred, I'd be thinking, God damn it. He was right there the I whole know. time. And if I just knew. Uh, no. yeah. How... how- I mean, I was just so pumped. I loved how intricate all this was, how it all came together, right? The whole sor- finding out the sorcerer thing and finding out, uh, you know, how you have to kill one without breaking yeah. the skin and how Love to get it. Ragnar to Niflheim, or out of Niflheim. Uh, and the Guess whole time what? we know that Aethelwald yeah. did it. And we're just watching every time he's there with Aethelwald, right? And we're just like, come on, when are you going to know? When are you going to know? And it's so good that they just they dragged it out this long and just teased us and it was so well done how they how they yeah because before it. that it was like um Uhtred was like you know they were at the campfire and Bayaka asked him you know so it's the blood you need to kill a person with the blood and he's like so who do you have to kill and Uhtred's like I do not know mm. and I was like well that's that's you know I think Bayaka was like well that's kind of important don't you think <laughs> 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 no, but, the whole uh, time I'm just like, I wish I could tell you. I wish I, I could know, tell I you. Know. <laughs> so, like, we it, were screaming at the TV. <laughs> it's at the wall. God! Hoping they could hear us. <laughs> when he finally finds out, it's so good. It's just yeah. so good. You're just, and then the battle's coming too. So it's just so much going into this, right? And There's... let's give props to Timothy Innes and Edward for giving oh, an yeah. awesome speech before the battle. He's even like, he's even like, 
don't fight for Alfred. Don't even fight for Edward. And I think, you know, the guys are like, did he just use himself in the third person? <laughs> and <laughs> no, but he's like, fight for the, the men of Wessex who are buried in this soil. You know, the, fight for our forefathers. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. And again, I'm not trying to plug all of our talks here with, with uh, Last Kingdom, but <laughs> there is Timothy. Timothy Ennis does go over that that battle speech with us, and it's pretty cool. And he even said it was like sort of I go almost want to say improvised when he picked up the sword after he was talking about the the land, and when he brought when he brought the sword out, there was dirt on it, and he just like brushed. It, and then you oh, see, man. It. So now when I watch that, I'm like, that is so fucking cool. That is that just is so, so cool. cool. Like that you just so in the cool. speech that was written for you, you you like that's just so cool. There's so many cool things, man. Everyone yeah. kills it. So and so then, awesome, right? Like Alfred probably gave the best battle speech before this one, mm -hmm. back, all the way back in season one. They do not know our courage. We shall make them cry out for mercy, and there will be none. Yeah, we've yeah. Had a lot of awesome battles. I wouldn't say we've had a lot of just like Lord of the Rings level battle speeches, though. I would say Alfred's was like up there right with yeah. like the lord of the ring battle when he's speech. like it is season one when he's like they will beg for mercy and they shall have none oh, no, mercy. no mercy oh my that was God. amazing i was ready to go fight danes oh. i know i was too i we were like we got up and like went outside we were like looking around for some some danes to fight some danes to but, they weren't there look and we were they weren't there so we just went back and oh, finished we the episode lucky. We yeah, we, Edward, fantastic speech. Uhtred gave a speech before they left, too. That was pretty good. Yeah. He gave like a little pre travel speech. Mm -hmm. But Edward was like right before the battle. Uhtred's a pretty yeah. direct, though, because he's a warrior and he's just like, we need to go kill. Yeah. And everyone's like, yeah, let's go kill. You know what I mean? <laughs> the, the Danes are marching. They're, yeah, they're in like a single file line. Well, it's like the woods, the right? There's like it's in like, this valley. Yeah. It's is why they valley. have to sort of file through. It's like two by two, I think. Yeah. <laughs> what? And then just so awesome. Just like, just John Loon is on those drums right now. Like, they just kind of come over the hill in these woods with the leaves and just, just like, it's just so freaking cool. And, and they're charging without shields which is really cool. You know, usually they go and set up a shield wall, mm. but this time, cause they're taking them kind of by surprise. Like finnan has got like double fisting his sword and like a, maybe a short sword. And, um, they're all going like no shield. Bayak is going in there with that ax. He's just, they just run the, just them running down yeah. the hill was so awesome. Just, yeah. Just scream at the top yeah. of their lungs. And they just flank the line, but they flank the rear of the line. So they cut to the front of the line where Canute and Heston, they just hear the screaming and they're like, <laughs> they're like looking <laughs> and Canute has to like ride down a little bit to like, see they're attacking the rear. He's like, defend the line. He sounds pretty cool when he's, mm. when he's yelling that. This is where I'm like, Canute Eivor. starts to go. Like, yeah. Eivor. Yeah. Eivor. Like, Eivor's voice. But we didn't think that obviously when we watched it, but, we didn't think of the first time. Uh, we didn't know that. But this time, play Assassin's Creed if you want more Magnus Brun and you need awesome Viking stuff. And if you like Last Kingdom, by the way, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is very Last Kingdom esque. And yes, yes. We learned from our talk with Magnus Brun, our second one, that Last Kingdom was a huge influence for the game, which was super cool to hear. Yeah, so anyway, if, I would definitely to this, check it out if you want to live yeah. in that sort of world. There, so back we got this, to this awesome battle. Awesome battle. You know they're they're doing well here at the beginning. They've taken the Danes by surprise. But the Danes outnumber them by quite a bit. Yeah, and now they're coming from the front, right? So they're getting right. their own reinforcements to come in. They're kicking ass, though. At, like they start getting pinned down, though. And the thing is, like you yeah, said, Finn they don't have yells like, yeah, yeah. So they're yeah, like, Finn is like, we, how, we can't hold the line much longer, you know. Yeah. And there's a lot of great kills. A lot of great uh, kills. A guy gets stabbed through the neck with a spear like this. Yeah. Oh. And uh, we see uh, Heston's going beast mode too. I mean, Heston uh, goes beast mode. Uh, we saw him a little bit like in the fight with the the tur before when he was going for Ethelfled, like in yeah. there. But again, he you know he kind of ran away there at the end. So like seeing him like go beast mode here was pretty sweet. Uh, 
It's pretty awesome. Canute goes beast mode. And again, this is the first time. It does. We were just like, oh, damn. Did you see Canute? Like, did you actually pay it? To, like, I think we were, I missed it uh, the first time. And you know, we, when we, it again, the first like, time. Whoa. It was just so much going on the first time, though. Like, there's, yeah, yeah. And, that's and, what and I think you're looking for so you're looking for Finn and you're looking for Uchard and Citric and stuff. And Bayaka yeah. was going off. Bayaka was going off. And Bayaka was sending people straight to hell. <laughs> he, was, <laughs> <laughs> he was smiting people. Bayaka was. That's the uh, like the perk he has on his weapon there. <laughs> Send yeah. to hell. Send yeah. hell axe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so meanwhile, while well, they they're starting to lose their edge, and that's when Mercia shows up, and it's Ethelfled who has taken the charge, leading the men of Mercia into battle. And on horseback, they ride in, and awesome shots of Millie Brady, like stabbing from her horse, swinging while on the horse, looks super cool. And I guess Ethel super cool. Fled in real life was like a warrior yes. queen. Yes. Um, so that's pretty. We've sweet. talked about it a lot. It's. I mean. I love how the show is like shedding light on this awesome historical figure because in a time where women did not have a lot of status, Ethel flood was a very instrumental. She's well loved by the in, people too. And, and yeah. And for fighting off the Danes in that time period, huge props to the show for like teaching us about Ethel flood. I'm, I love now knowing about this awesome. Historical yeah. And Bernard figure. Cornwall too, obviously with, with his books and well, I didn't know about Bernard Alfred Cornwall. or any of them. I, think I obviously didn't know about that, but but I feel like someone like Ethel Fled, there's so few amazing female historical figures that had the status that she had mm. and ruled that she should be highlighted. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's definitely better to books. show a real one here instead of just making one up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's super cool. And um, and Millie Brady kills it as Ethel Fled. I mean, it's I like she was Millie born Brady. to play Ethel Fled. Oh, me too. And she was she looked so good like on the horse she looked like a pro just slicing down and yeah. you know she, her father had her train with Steapa, so she knows how to fight it's so cool yeah you if you train with Steapa, right like you could probably take on a day because step is a big dude <laughs> big beast man. beast man. beast the danes start to realize they're not doing well um yeah 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 so now now the edge goes back to the saxons and now they're kicking butt again and now like Heston and Ethelwald are like, there's this cart and Heston's like fighting pretty well. And Ethelwald's there and Heston's like, Hey, where's your guy with the army? We need it now. We can't <laughs> last this much longer. Mm. And Ethelwald said, he'll, he'll be here soon. I know he'll, I swear. And secretly did say he's coming in late. He was like, he said yeah, it. Yeah. He's like, I'm coming in late. So I can attack the rear. Heston's like, great. Which side is he taking? <laughs> <laughs> and Ethelwald is just watching like, and we're we're wondering like too like ooh what's he gonna do what's Sigurd gonna do they've really kind of left it up in the air and he yells for our forefathers and for Wessex so he heard the speech yeah <laughs> he must have heard the speech. maybe that's what swayed him right like someone like told him he's like by the way before you go in and decide like Edward gave this sweet ass piece about like <laughs> forefathers and there was this dirt. <laughs> Like it was so cool. He's just like, God he's like, damn. dude, you had to be there. He's like, and I missed it. He shows him on his eye scroll, <laughs> just like a picture, just like like it's so long, scroll so long too, and he just has scroll. to like keep scrolling. Has a speech, yeah, <laughs> with a picture. Look at this portrait. Now look at it here. Well, while Edward was giving the speech, everybody got their scrolls out to, to document it. <laughs> and Edward was like, are any of you actually listening to it or are you all just writing on your scrolls? <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing when we go to see a minstrel play. <laughs> just enjoy the music instead of trying to record it on your scroll. <laughs> Stop having your scroll out the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, so that's how Sigurd decided to join Wessex. <laughs> <laughs> and not and not the Danes. And we know why you why you guys come here. It's for for these awesome facts, you know, be, some in depth yeah. story stuff. So that's that's why we shared that with you guys. You know, that's why. Yeah. So here's the question though: Did did Sigurd get there and kind of look at? Oh well, the Saxons are winning, so. I'm going to pick them right now. <laughs> That's what I was wondering when he got there. Because it looked like That's he was kind probably... of deciding, right? Yeah. And like, he was probably like, here, I'll either yell 
fuck Alfred or for our <laughs> forefather. <laughs> Whichever one of those I yell, yeah. we, that's we we attack the respective army, and everyone's like, "All yeah. right, all right, just make sure you yell it loud enough here, you know." <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, exactly. The guys in the back. What did he say? <laughs> Who are we getting? Just, just go in. Just swing. <laughs> just swing. <laughs> so anyway, they um Ethelwald obviously didn't hear what he yelled, so he's like seeing them charge, and it's not until he sees Sigebert slash a Dane that he's like, Oh shit. And Heston sees it. I love this part. Yeah, but Beck Larson kills this part. He's like, That is your man. That is your man. <laughs> your man. That's your and he's man. Like, that is your man. And his voice is so <laughs> cool. His voice is and fucking awesome. I think he was gonna kill Ethelwald, but then somebody comes and attacks Heston again. He has to defend himself. Mm. By the way, Ethelwald was like trying to fight a little bit, but he was like pretty wimpy about it. He like I think killed a guy. And he's like, got one eye too. Turned to him. Props. He's got one eye. He's got props one to eye. him for trying with one eye, right? Hey, he fought at Ethenden. He fought at Ethenden. He fought at. He even tried to use that against Uthred earlier. He's like, like I fought at Ethenden, fought at Ethenden again. And anyway, show wall. This is an amazing moment coming up here. By the way, as Sigurdbreed's coming in, Sigurdbreed has a cool couple cool beats. And awesome spear throw from Canute to kill um, Sigibrit on the horse. Oh, Sigibrit starts him? charging Canute. Yeah, Canute took the that. spear. Yeah, Canute. Like I was wondering why he wasn't in season four, and that's why. There's like a moment when when Canute sees Sigibrit, and Sigibrit sees Canute, and Canute or Sigibrit starts charging on him with his horse, and um, Canute takes the spear, and just like throws it, and Sigibrit goes flying off the horse. Oh, that was cuts him. Back oh, to shit. Canute, cuts back to Canute, and he's like. <sighs> He's like, ah. <laughs> that was me playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. <laughs> I, I threw the spear. Now you can throw the the weapon. Yeah. Or I did that and killed a guy. I was just like, when you ah. get the execution on someone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just sitting in my living room, just going, ah. just over and over again. <laughs> I probably didn't look as cool as Magnus Brune, though. But Ethelwald's there. He's just looking around. And Uhtred sees him. And it's just the cinematography is so good. Uh, at the same time, Ethelwald looks. He sees Uhtred. And Uhtred's like, there you are. There you are, motherfucker. I think, <laughs> like, I think Brita... And then he looks at Brita. Brita's there, too. And they all kind of, like, lock eyes weird in, like, a triangle thing. Yeah. You know? And Ethelwald, like, makes a realization that Brita must have told Uhtred that I was the one that killed Ragnar. Yeah. And that's why Uhtred looks like he wants Ooh. to kill me right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then John so, Loon just lets out those drums again. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's a great like one shot. It. Yeah. And it's like a great like follow of him like running through with his blue cape standing yeah, out from everyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like Uhtred's point of view, he has to like fight through all these Danes, just mm. like just right in front of him, this camera, this like I guess I think it's a one shot tracking here. Maybe uh, he gets, he like gets knocked over at one point. <laughs> And he, he like grabs, he immediately grabs Tura's blood to make sure it's okay. Oh, and, like a Dane's yeah. about to come on top of him and kill him and, and an ax to the back. And just like Brita did back in season one, baby, Brita with those she axes. saved him again. She had a little friendly fire here. You know, she killed one of her own men That's to right. do this. That's right. That's um, one of her for Ragnar, for Ragnar. You know, poor poor Dane that got killed by her, his own person. He was doing everything right in that battle. He probably like he walked like, right by her too. He's like, look at this. I'm going to yeah. kill that guy. He's like, I'm going to kill Uhtred. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I'm going to kill the one. Like, I'm going to level up like instantly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm a level one right now. I could go to 50. It was probably like a really nice Dane who just his whole life did so good. And, you know, <laughs> anyway, so he gets killed. And, you know, Ethelwald had gotten on a horse. And Uhtred also gets on a horse. And that's where we kind of leave the battle. It kind of shows Canute still fighting and Heston's like, we've lost, you know. Mm. They don't really show what happens after that, but we have to assume, and we know in season four, that Canute and Heston get away with like some of the army. And then we have this epic chase on horseback between yeah. Uhtred, like GTA is a guy off a horse. Yeah. <laughs> and just yeah. John Lou's just like, let the drums go. Just go. <laughs> just go. <laughs> it is awesome. at the wall is like epic weaving. Chase. I mean, it, through the trees how they filmed that I'm, I'm sure they had a stunt guy um doing i think harry told us that they had a stunt guy with that part because then ethelwald like hits a tree and the horse throws him off and he rolls down a hill mm. 
And Uhtred's horse just like stops, backs up a little bit. And Ethelwald like goes and like hides behind this tree. I just love He's, like the shot hiding. Of and of another like kind of Batman ish. It's like a Batman moment, but Uhtred like jumps down and like yeah. you can see his feet land. Well, like him just stepping off the horse too from the hill, like because yeah. there's like the sun behind him and just yeah, like yeah. silhouetted and like it was Beautiful such a shot. cool shot. I think Beautiful was it shot. Ed Baglazette who yeah. I think directed this last one. Yeah, Ed Baglazetti. Oh damn, yeah. killed it. Awesome. Uhtred goes down and Ethelwald knows he's <sighs> been caught. Ethelwald's like Uhtred, you know. Hey, <laughs> what does he say? He's like, don't, don't kill me, man. Uhtred, just, please don't kill me. Yeah, he's like, please don't kill me. Like, he's yeah, he's just like, like, uh, he's like, like I don't have a sword. Life. I don't have a sword. That's like, what I don't he even says. have a sword. He's just like, he's yeah. like, my my and, hand is wounded, my arm is broken. Like, I can't wield a sword. And he's like, yeah, you've got another good arm. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, he's like, I, I will leave. I will never. You'll never see me again. You know, we said, he's, we first he's like, it's like you killed Ragnar and he's like tries to like kind of pass that by at the wall yeah. he's like say it say you killed Ragnar he's like I did he's it was, like, but he was well, he's like me. he's like he's like yes he like finally like it comes out yeah and he's like but you have to understand he was gonna kill me like I had to kill him it was a war of sorts a, yeah yeah crazy. exactly and uh, Uhtred is he, and he's like begging he's like you'll never see me again like i will leave I'll, you know i'll leave this land yeah Uhtred um, has like please his don't sword up me. to him and he's just like yeah. blubbering like again he's Harry like on the ground killing it here and i think Harry mcintyre yeah partly worried but i think he's also like trying to just sell it like how he did with alfred when he's like uncle yeah. and grabbing the hand i think he's just like like the, just go for it he go does. for it yeah. maybe he'll pity me he won't do it i think he even says at one point like i'm not worth right. it yeah yeah and 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 that that definitely shows because utrid kind of backs away and he goes down the hill and he's like you'll need you'll need some silver to travel and again and at the wall's like shit it works <laughs> he's like go oh, my, my tactic worked again and he gets yeah, he's like yeah yeah i will yes. i will and again another moment here where i'm just like oh. Utrecht, what are you doing what are you doing yeah. like stop this do it. and I, I again i don't know why i'm doubting him but i am i know at this moment i know he takes a, this sack that Ethelwald thinks is full of silver, tosses it to him, but it's really filled with Terra's blood. And like as soon as Ethelwald catches it, like right here, the sword. Like, it was so smooth. It was like a toss and stab. Like I think he must have practiced that against a tree or something. <laughs> Just, like, he's like, it's gonna be so cool <laughs> when I do this. <laughs> No one will be there to scroll it down, but it's going to be so good if someone could have scrolled it, you know? I know. <laughs> Caught it on a scroll. I know. Um, good thing Brita so, was there. She probably scrolled it. Yeah, Brita got her scroll out real quick. <laughs> Not the best angle from the scroll, but, but better than nothing. <laughs> yeah, better than nothing. At least people will know. Yeah. But yeah, anyway. this was easily... Just, mm. just stabs him right through. Just so satisfying. Just, just like, just stare him down, like, oh, just push him down. Oh my God, what a good, satisfying kill. I mean, again, <laughs> love Harry, but Aethelwald, fuck you, man. Like, I know. <laughs> this was I a know. great, awesome kill. Awesome. I know. It makes me a little sad that that you know Harry wasn't in the next season because he was so good on the screen. I mean, he, yeah, again, he was perfect for the show, and I hope to see him in a lot in the future. I really can't wait to see more of his work. Yeah. But um him and David just brought it this season. They brought it. And Ian Hart. And Ian Hart. Hart. And Adre. Adre, man. You... And Adre. Of course, God Adre. Damn. Of course. They all do. They all bring it though. I mean, but I think I think certain ones have standout season. It was definitely like David Dawson's season to like own it, I think. Like mm -hmm. to to really be the star this season. I think of you know sort of as like Edward and Alfred season. I like those are my favorite moments with the father son moments. But but also Ethelwald, you know, to finally become like a true antagonist. Amazing. So anyway, Brita's there, and it's done. And I love how like they even show like that time where the sun rays kind of go through the trees, and it looks like 
it looks like they interpret it as like a bridge and, and we've all seen it in real life when the sun does that mm. like through the clouds and it looks like it's like a sh- like a like a tube or something that like you could yeah i don't know how to describe it but but for them that was them, like the uh the the bifrost right to to asgard odin's hall yeah. right yeah and i think we talked about it last wow. time like what if it what if it started raining like what would their would they have come up with like another answer to fit their narrative? Like, mm. oh, that's a sign that, you know, he's really crossed over. Like maybe the the water is washing away the dirt from him so that he can rise and go or something. Yeah. I'm sure they would have interpreted anything to put into that narrative, you know? Yeah. But, that's something, you know, f- through the whole show and through the books that they oh, they always give like a logical explanation how something could happen. But yeah, you know, from these people who it's their culture, it's their beliefs and uh, like then they through their eyes it seems like this is why this happened or we killed Aethelwald the the freaking Bifrost just opened that means <laughs> yeah. that means Ragnar is going up he's going that's up that's right and even though like Ragnar is dead and again another reason why I was kind of upset when we were first watching this season yeah. Ragnar died uh, but then after this I was kind of like damn like that was such a good moment like he made it to Valhalla that way even though yeah. he didn't they didn't reconcile with Utra directly after him saying I, like, I wish we had brother. that I wish we had that I wish we got that but somehow they'll they'll I'm sure someday if Utra goes to Valhalla Fucking <sighs> amazing tap to the battle amazing. like it had a way through the battle to get eighth world like this is this was just like yeah perfect Perfect. After that, like Uhtred goes to the grave site of Ragnar, and he takes that's back where the he, that's necklace. where he does his yeah he takes yeah the Mjolnir necklace back and and that's where um you know the post credit there the the credit end season like narrative Uhtred thing goes and yeah, to set up the all. next season he says I am Uhtred of Bevan or I am Uhtred son of Uhtred I am Uhtred Ragnason destiny is all mm. it's like he found himself you know it's like he exactly he went through he, so many zoom out they had him like yeah. riding off before that uh um, yeah such a good such a good shot such a good freaking season uh yes again uh just you know probably most of the the last king seasons we we haven't been ranking them i'd give this one though probably the, when i first saw it i don't know oh, if God. i would have gave it a 10 out of 10 but yeah. now i give it a 10 out of 10 i yeah. give it a 10 out of 10 I give it a 10 out of 10. Yes, sir. 10 out of 10. And uh, so good. It is just, just perfect from every aspect, whether it's costume, whether it's cinematography, whether it's directing, whether it's acting, set design. I don't care what it is. The horses were even great in this. <laughs> the and... horse, so much better than their other work they've even been in. Uh, their best uh... work they've done. <laughs> just a truly incredible season. Before we so, give our final thoughts here, mm. what is your favorite moment then from this episode, from episode nine? My best moment? Best yeah. moment would have to be when he stabs Ethelwald at the end, I think. That's going to be mine too. Uh, it's so That in the battle. like The it's, battle itself was awesome too. I mean, what made the battle though was everything going into it. It's just knowing yeah. that Ethelwald's going to be there. You're like you're getting all these people coming together. Oh. Uhtred is teaming up for Wessex. Like he finally yeah. decided. Close, close second, I think, to that best moment might have to be the in the 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 Flash Witten was pretty awesome scene yeah. as well. Yeah, that one's that one's yeah a close second, a close second so, from so from what's me, but my mine is bro, with what's you, your though. bro moment though? What's your bro moment? <sighs> Ooh, my I guess my bro moment again. Uh, Finn and his stolen most of mine, and he's still in this one again. Is when he he goes up to Bianca and he's uh, he says. You know, we'll help you bury her. And at first, you know, he's trying to coax him away. And he's like, here, I'll do this for you. So you don't even have to worry about it. And then he's just so understanding. He's just like, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to help you, though. Even if you even though you're going to do it, you said you're going to do the actual work. I'm still going with you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to be yeah. there present with you. you. Yeah. My breast bro moment has got to be kind of a deeper one um, with Uhtred saving Ragnar. And Brita also being in involved in that, and like more of a specific one, I guess, would be when Brita saved Uhtred again, just like she had done back in season one with the yeah. axe throw. And for her to do that again here, so that they could save Ragnar, 
and have a bro moment for Ragnar too. Um, so just somewhere in there, whether it's Brita, you know, <laughs> the whole kind of out Brita Utred Ragnar Ragnar connection. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, that's it I, for me. I think that's a good bro moment there. Mm. That's a good bro moment. Mm. Uh, so that yeah, that's that's it for that episode. Uh, let's let's talk full season here. So what was your best bro moment from the whole season? Oh, best bro moment. I think my best bro moment from the season is going to be Uhtred and Brita's adventure that they went on in that episode. To me, that was that was a lot when she they finally like she comes to an understanding of, um, you know, why Uhtred did the things he did. And she kind of accepts it, you know, mm. at least in the moment. But that whole adventure, I think, was like much needed for two characters that went back to the very first episode. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's got to be my best bro moment is Brita. And again, remember, bro moment doesn't have to mean, you know, male, female. It has to be male, male. It's, yeah. It can be, it can be male, female. It it's be healed, typically, it, be... it came out of us for, for saying it because males and we're males and we see all these these uh, yeah. these uh, dudes who have these camaraderie moments instead of this negative drama. But fe- the females, Hild, Brita, uh, later on some other characters, Yep, they, they do some... They have some great bro moments. Yeah. What, what about you? I mean, I can really pick any of Finnan's ones um, from, <laughs> no. from the season because he has, I mean, he, he kills it. I mean, this season. Also, Citric, uh, he had that great one with the, the, the fake out bro moment. Yes, uh, that was fantastic. With Uhtred. But I'm going to have to go with best bro moment uh, for Alfred and Uhtred when he pardons yeah. them. And he's like, this is unconditional. Whether you show up or not, whether awesome. you stay or not. Uh, like, like this is your part, and you've earned this. Toast to you, toast to Uhtred, the true Lord of Bember. Like, fuck yep. yeah, that's that's got to be it. Um, that's fantastic. But bro of the season, we've talked about bro of the season before. Oh. Uh, Bianca, I think, had it for season one and two for me. Uh, I'm hands down giving this one to Finnan though, as bro of the yeah. season. Yeah, season three, Finnan. Um, definitely, definitely, he had yeah. so much great banter. Um, gotta be bro of the season. Gotta yeah. be bro of the season. The the bro group like forms at the second half of season two, but I think this one is where like all the moments like Citric and Finn yep. and uh, they start to have like their sword clinks and stuff like yeah. that, and uh, and Osfirth and uh, yep. But I'm gonna have to gotta give, to give it to Finn in season three, bro of the year, bro of the season. Bro and then season. what was your favorite overall moment from season three? Oh, damn, I'm, I'm going to have to go the the whole king decision and battle uh, between... It was mine as well. It was mine as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was episode five and six, where, wherever yeah. uh, uh, Alfred, you know, rides up there. I mean, the whole thing, right? And Uhtred Edward taunts... forces Edward to make the decision. Yeah. Uhtred taunts Heston. It's so great. He's like, I'm going to have songs written about how you're a coward. Uh, like such a classic Uhtred and Uhtred from the books too, you know, like yes. always, always using people's emotions to, to make them do strategically bad things. And yep. Uh, then the battle itself, just Uhtred fighting in the mud and the, the sh- like the shields and just yelling out stuff. It's so brutal. And then again, when they just scope into the woods and there are just all these men here and you just keep seeing men one by one, and then they're up on the yep. horses do you charge or do you breach? I mean, oh, you, yeah. It's so forcing Edward to make a decision. Yeah. It's, there's so many good things that that's hands down. Uh, a, probably a close second would be Alfred when he gets up onto the horse and mm, he's, great he's holding the sword up and everyone's like, long live the king. It's just, it's just filled with so many moments. Also, to probably one. another, this one, probably two tied for a second. I love when Uhtred burns down that town that's serving the Danes who's in yeah, yeah. Ethelflaed's land. That one we forget about a lot, I feel like. That one's it's, but that was a cool moment. He gets to the roof and he just burns down the town. Oh, yeah. He goes yeah. out to the guy who, who had him captive and he just kills him and he's like wipes his knife off on him. Oh, yeah. The town's burn. He just leaves like a gangster. Oh, my that's God. That's a good sleeper pick. Good sleeper that's, pick. That that would be my second. Though. Like It's it's got to be the, the Edward... I mean, the whole, like, oh, yeah. Alfred Mine nods well. to Stiappa. It's like, one of my overall favorite Last Kingdom moments, period. 
hands down when i think about the show i'm just like i think about that moment so yeah there's i mean there's so many good ones i mean for from this yeah. whole season we could just talk forever and we already have uh yes <laughs> we we now have like eight hours on season three here so yeah so tell us what you thought we want to know your favorite moments from the show and your opinions of what happened and just let us know in the comments we'd love to have a discussion about it uh, we hope that you subscribe if you like what you're hearing and follow us on insta on facebook twitter uh, for for more fun stuff to come also adre alexander oh, yeah. Draymond. If you want to come on to the show, can you come on? Come on. You're always welcome. You're always welcome. You're always welcome. <clears throat> but it's like we always say. Like we always say. It's like we always say. Goodbye. Goodbye. Destiny is on. Destiny.